What's up, my average med students? Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to be covering pediatrics from the Zanke Step 2 deck. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to be notified of future posts. Happy studying. 1. Peritidis is a feature of mumps that presents with a swollen neck and parotid glands. 2. Dennis Drash syndrome is a tumor syndrome that involves Wilms tumor nephroblastoma, nephropathy, and genital abnormalities. Dennis Dick Drash. 3. What is the treatment for streptococcal pharyngitis with penicillin allergy? Macrolides or clindamycin both for 10 days. 4. Which class of asthma involves symptoms with beta-2 exacerbations per week but not daily? Mild persistent exacerbations limit daily activity. 5. How many night symptoms are seen in severe persistent asthma reactive airway disease? 4 to 7 times per week high dose inhaled corticosteroids plus LABA. 6. Capillary finger stick lead level greater than 5 mcg. DO needs to be confirmed with which test? Venice lead measurement. 7. What is the treatment for intermittent asthma symptoms lesser than 2 days, week, nighttime awakenings lesser than 2 times per month? A rescue inhaler Saba is needed, typically a Saba, but may be an inhaled anticholinergic as well. 8. What is the treatment for mild persistent asthma greater than 2 days, week, nighttime awakenings 3 to 4 times per month? Saba plus low-dose inhaled corticosteroids. 9. What is the treatment for moderate persistent asthma? Saba plus low-dose inhaled corticosteroids plus LABA. You cannot give LABA without inhaled corticosteroids or steroids. That will increase mortality and is always the wrong answer. If the patient is on a LABA, they must be on steroids. Period. 10. A young, black female patient presents complaining of shortness of breath on exertion. She is otherwise healthy and has no past medical history. Physical exam reveals erythema nodosum, lymphadenopathy and fine rails on lung auscultation. Chest X-ray reveals hiller adenopathy. What is the most likely diagnosis? Sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis key points. Common in young, black, females presence is shortness of breath on exertion with occasional fine rails on exam. No wheezing can be associated with erythema nodosum and lymphadenopathy. If present, the diagnosis is likely best initial test. Chest X-ray hiller adenopathy seen in greater than 95% of cases. Most accurate test, lymph node biopsy to look for non-casating granulomas treatment is prednisone. If asymptomatic, do not treat. 13. The following neuroimaging is found in what congenital infection? CMV, paraventricular calcifications. 14. Benzocaine is a local anesthetic that is associated with methemoglobinemia as an adverse effect. 16. What musculoskeletal pathology is characterized by impaired relaxation after a single muscle contraction? Myotonic dystrophy. 17. While most cases of renal cell carcinoma are sporadic, lesser than 2% occur as part of von Appel-Lindau syndrome bilateral renal cell carcinoma. The characteristics of von Appel-Lindau disease may be remembered with the mnemonic HARP. H. Hemangioblastomas in retina, brain stem, cerebellum, spine. A. Angiomatosis for example cavernous hemangiomas in skin, mucosa, organs. R. Renal cell carcinoma. P. Fiacromocytoma. 18. What are the serum levels of complement in mixed cryoglobulinemia? Low deposition of immunoglobulin and complement in vessel wall. Affects immune complex mediated activation of complement cascade. 19. Osteoid osteoma is a benign bone forming tumor characterized by a small, radiolucent nidus. Clinical features. Young patient, nighttime pain in lower extremities. Responds to aspirin versus osteoblastoma does not respond to aspirin. Nidus produces high levels of prostaglandins causing nighttime pain and responds to NSAIDs, decreased prostaglandin production. 20. Rapid diagnosis, intracortical nidus, which may display a variable amount of mineralization, accompanied by cortical thickening and reactive sclerosis in a long bone shaft on x-ray in a young patient. Osteoid osteoma, solitary nidus lesion. 21. Rapid diagnosis, young patient, nighttime lower extremity pain relieved by aspirin osteoid osteoma versus osteoblastoma is not relieved by aspirin. 22. What sensitive antibody is associated with SLE? Antinuclear antibodies low specificity. Highly specific antibodies. Anti-DSDNA. Anti-Smith for example, all patients with SLE have positive antinuclear antibodies. Thus, if they don't have it, SLE is ruled out. If they do have it, further testing is required because it is also associated with other diseases. Statistics correlation. S not sensitive means that it's ruled out if antinuclear antibodies is negative, they do not have lupus. This is why tests with high sensitivity are good for screening, even at the expense of high specificity. 23. What is the most common cause of inherited intellectual disability? Fragile X syndrome. What inherited disorder is caused by expansion of GAA trinucleotide repeats in the Fratixin gene? Friedreich ataxia. 25. 
Patients with suspected Guillain-Barr syndrome should have their pulmonary function assessed with serial spirometry. FVC is the gold standard for assessing ventilation. Decline in FVC especially lesser than 20 milliliters per kilogram indicates impending respiratory failure. 26. What is the likely diagnosis in a non-dysmorphic infant that presents with bilateral lower extremity hypertonia and hyperreflexia with equinovarous deformities of both feet? Cerebral palsy spastic diplegia subtype CP is a disorder of non-progressive motor dysfunction. Other subtypes of cerebral palsy include dyskinetic and ataxic. 27. Which lysosomal storage disease is caused by deficiency of hexasaminidase A? Tay-Sachs disease. 28. Absence seizures may be differentiated from inattentive staring spells by the presence of automatisms. For example, lip smacking, eyelid fluttering. 29. What cause of intellectual disability is associated with small palpebral fissures, smooth philtrum, and thin vermilion border? Fetal alcohol syndrome. 30. What is the treatment for umbilical hernias in children? Monitor for spontaneous resolution by age 5 less likely if greater than 1.5 cm in diameter. 31. What is the treatment of gastroschisis and omphalosal? Immediate surgery. 32. What childhood malignancy typically manifests as an asymptomatic abdominal mass that does not cross the midline? Wilms tumor nephroblastoma may also present with hematuria versus neuroblastoma, which is typically symptomatic and crosses the midline. 33. What is the most common renal malignancy of early childhood ages 2 to 5? Wilms tumor nephroblastoma. 34. What is the most common site of metastatic spread of a Wilms tumor? Lungs. Thus, children with suspected Wilms tumor should have chest imaging to evaluate for metastasis. 35. What is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in preadolescent children lesser than 10 years old? Minimal change disease. 36. What is the next step in management for a child with suspected minimal change disease? Corticosteroids. 37. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with abdominal pain, arthralgias, and palpable purpura on the lower extremities? Henox gonline purpura often renal involvement occurs, which can result in hematuria. 38. What is the most common cause of urinary tract obstruction in newborn boys? Posterior urethral valves classic findings on prenatal U.S. include bladder distension and bilateral hydronephrosis. This condition does not occur in girls. 39. The primary abnormality in Potter sequence is oligohydamnios. Low amniotic fluid subsequently results in pulmonary hypoplasia, flat facies, and limb deformities. 40. In Potter sequence, oligohydramnios leads to pulmonary hypoplasia. Most common cause of death in infants with Potter sequence, due to the lack of normal alveolar distension by aspirated amniotic fluid. 41. What is the test of choice for definitive diagnosis of vesicoarteral reflux? Voiding cyst aurethrogram typically done for newborns age lesser than one month with their first UTI, children lesser than two years with recurrent UTIs, or a first UTI from an organism other than E. coli. 42. What is the likely diagnosis in a young male that presents with recurrent hematuria and bilateral sensorineural deafness? Alport syndrome classically presents as a triad of visual, renal, and hearing problems, can't see, can't pee, can't hear a bee. 43. What is the next step in management for a 12-month-old girl with a confirmed E. coli UTI that is resolving after initiation of antibiotics? Renal and bladder ultrasound UTIs in children. 1. Urinalysis and urine culture. 2. Renal and bladder ultrasound at 2 to 24 months with febrile UTI B. Recurrent UTIs any age. 3. Voiding cyst aurethrography. A lesser than 1 month. B. Lesser than 2 years with recurrent UTIs. C. Organism other than E. coli. 44. What acid-based disturbance is associated with pyloric stenosis? Hypokalemic, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis secondary to vomiting of gastric acid and subsequent volume contraction should be corrected prior to pyloramiotomy to reduce risk of postoperative apnea. 45. What psychiatric condition is characterized by recurrent hair pulling resulting in hair loss with significant distress, impairment? Trichotillomania hair loss is characterized by patchy alopecia with broken hairs of varying lengths. 46. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that is verbal and talkative at home but refuses to speak in specific social settings, for example school? Selective mutism frequently comorbid with social anxiety disorder. 47. Physiological neonatal jaundice occurs, in part, due to transiently low UDP glucuronyl transferase activity at birth adult levels are not reached until age 2 weeks. Other contributing factors include increased bilirubin production and increased enterohepatic cycling. 48. What is the next step in management for a newborn with bilious emesis and dilated loops of bowel on X-ray? Contrast enema helps differentiate between meconium ileus microcolon on enema and Hirschsprung disease transition zone on enema. 49. What is the likely diagnosis in a well-appearing infant that presents with regurgitation after feeding, as well as eczema and painless, bloody stools? Milk protein allergy management includes eliminating soy and dairy protein from the diet if breastfeeding or switching to hydrolyzed formula if formula feeding. 
50. What cause of bilious vomiting is characterized by meconium obstructing the rectosigmoid colon with a transition zone visualized on X-ray? Hirschsprung disease versus meconium ileus, where the level of obstruction is the ileum and X-ray reveals a microcolon. 51. What is the likely diagnosis in a preterm newborn that presents with feeding intolerance, abdominal distension, bloody stools with gas in the bowel wall on X-ray? Necrotizing enterocolitis, X-ray will show pneumatosis intestinales extravasation of bowel gas into damaged bowel wall, which is pathognomonic for necrotizing enterocolitis. 52. Initial management of necrotizing enterocolitis includes supportive care and initiation of broad-spectrum intravenous antibiotics. Due to risk of septic shock, surgery is necessary if perforation occurs seen as pneumoprotonium on X-ray. 53. What is the likely diagnosis in an infant that presents with projectile, non-bilious emesis and an olive-shaped mass in the abdomen? Pyloric stenosis may be visualized on ultrasound as an elongated, thickened pylorus. 54. Prior to pyloromyotomy, patients with pyloric stenosis should receive intravenous hydration and electrolytes to decrease the risk of post-operative apnea. 55. Bilary cysts require surgical resection to relieve obstruction and prevent the development of Cholangiac carcinoma. 56. Esophageal atresia with TEF typically presents with drooling, choking, and vomiting with the first feeding may be complicated by aspiration pneumonia due to gastric acid reflux into the distal esophagus through the fistula. 57. Esophageal atresia with distal TEF may present with abdominal distension due to air in the stomach visible. On chest X-ray, the tracheoesophageal fistula permits air entry into the stomach and intestines. 58. Esophageal atresia with distal TEF is characterized by failure to pass a nasogastric tube into the stomach. 59. What is the likely diagnosis in a 5-day-old baby that presents with unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia and signs of dehydration after exclusively breastfeeding? Breastfeeding failure jaundice signs of dehydration include decreased urine, stool output and brick-red urate crystals in the diaper, inadequate stooling results in poor bilirubin elimination and increased enterohepatic circulation of bilirubin. 60. Ray syndrome causes microvesicular fatty change in the liver with hypoglycemia, vomiting, hepatongally, and eventually coma, death versus hepatic stetosis, which is characterized by macrovesicular fatty change. 61. In children, the most common cause of intussusception is lymphoid hyperplasia for example due to rotavirus or adenovirus payers patches hypertrophy in response to viral infection, which acts as a lead point for intussusception. 62. Intussusception is characterized by a target sign appearance on ultrasound. Ultrasound is the first line imaging modality for diagnosis of intussusception. 64. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with pancreatic insufficiency, failure to thrive, and recurrent respiratory infections? Cystic fibrosis. 65. What is the next step in management for a newborn with bilious emesis and gasless abdomen on X-ray? Upper GI series, for example, barium swallow if the bowel gas pattern is not suggestive of duodenal atresia or distal obstruction, and upper GI series is performed to evaluate for malrotation. 66. What is the next step in management for a stable child with suspected intussusception and a target sign on ultrasound? Ultrasound guided air contrast enema diagnostic and often therapeutic, critical for avoiding ischemia and peritonitis. 67. The initial step in the evaluation of biliary atresia is abdominal ultrasound. May show an absent or abnormal gallbladder, the gold standard for diagnosis in intraoperative cholangiogram. 68. What is the most common presentation of Meckel's diverticulum? In a toddler, painless hematocheia typically asymptomatic. Other manifestations include intussusception, intestinal obstruction, and volvulus. 69. Meckel diverticulum is diagnosed using a technetium 99 meters per technetate study for uptake by ectopic gastric mucosa. 70. What is the likely diagnosis in a generally healthy newborn that presents with cyanosis that worsens with feeding and is relieved with crying despite a normal cardiac and respiratory exam? Chonal atresia failure to pass a catheter through the nose into the oropharynx is suggestive of this diagnosis, CT scan confirms the diagnosis. 71. What is the likely diagnosis in an infant that presents with macroglossia, umbilical hernia, hemihyperplasia, and hypoglycemia? beckwith wiedemann syndrome congenital hyperinsulinemia associated with BWS. 72. Eosinophilic esophagitis classically presents with dysphagia and food impaction in response to food allergens. Other symptoms include epigastric pain and vomiting. 73. Does eosinophilic esophagitis respond to GERD therapy for example PPIs? No however, a two-month trial of PPIs is part of the diagnostic evaluation. If there is no symptom improvement, an endoscopy with esophageal biopsy is warranted. 74. Omphalosal is caused by failure of the herniated intestines to return to the body cavity during development typically below the umbilical cord midline and covered by peritoneum, surgical emergency. 75. Gastroschisis is a congenital malformation characterized by extrusion of abdominal contents through the anterior abdominal wall. 
typically to the right of the umbilicus with no peritoneal covering, surgical emergency. 76. What is the next step in management of caustic ingestion after airway, breathing, and circulation have been assessed? Decontamination for example remove contaminated clothing, irrigate exposed skin. 77. Methemoglobinemia is associated with decreased O2 saturation on pulse oximetry and normal PaO2. Short explanation. Standard pulse oximetry is unable to detect methemoglobin, thus creating a falsely low oxygen saturation versus co-oximetry, which can detect hemoglobin. Methemoglobin and carboxyhemoglobin methemoglobin is not detected on standard pulse oximetry, therefore O2 saturation is slightly decreased to about 85%. Arterial blood gas ABG detects free, unbound O2, which is not affected by methemoglobin. 78. What is the recommended management for children with moderate lead poisoning 45 to 69 mcg DL on venous blood testing? DMSA succimer. 79. Benzocaine is a local anesthetic that may cause methemoglobinemia in toxic doses. 80. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that notices multiple, mildly pruritic hypopigmented skin lesions on the face and trunk after beginning summer camp? Tinea versicolor pityriasis versicolor typically noticed after sun exposure as the surrounding skin gets darker. 81. What is the recommended treatment for seborrheic dermatitis in infants? Emollients and non-medicated shampoos spontaneous remission is common. 82. What microorganism is most commonly involved in the pathogenesis of tinea capitis? Trichophyton tonsurans other. Dermatophytes, such as microsporum canis, can also cause tinea capitis. 83. What is the recommended treatment for scabies? Topical permethrin or oral ivermectin. 84. What is the likely diagnosis in an infant that presents with the lesion below? Superficial infantile strawberry hemangioma. 85. Which skin disorder begins as a herald patch followed days later by other scaly, erythematous plaques and a Christmas tree distribution on the trunk? Pityriasis rosea may be associated with a viral prodrome, self-resolving in 6 to 8 weeks. 86. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with generalized erythema, fever, and superficial flaccid bully with a positive Nikolsky sign? Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome typically a self-resolving process that only requires supportive care. The Nikolsky sign is positive if gentle lateral pressure on the skin surface causes detachment of the superficial skin. 87. The targetoid appearance of erythema multiforme is due to central epidermal necrosis, surrounded by erythema. 88. What is the likely diagnosis in a 5-day-old baby that did not receive perinatal care and presence with easy bruisability with an elevated prothrombin time? Vitamin K deficiency bleeding previously known as hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Deficiency occurs due to combination of poor placental transfer, absent gut flora, immature liver function, and inadequate levels of vitamin K in breast milk. 89. The diagnosis of sickle cell disease can be confirmed with hemoglobin electrophoresis. 90. How does the amount of iron, total iron binding capacity, the percentage of iron bound to protein, and the amount of iron storage protein change in someone with iron deficiency anemia? And how do these changes help to tell if the anemia is caused by a lack of iron or by a chronic disease? In iron deficiency anemia, the serum iron level decreases, the total iron binding capacity increases, the percentage saturation decreases, and the ferritin level decreases. These changes can help distinguish iron deficiency anemia from anemia of chronic disease because in the latter, the ferritin level is usually normal or high, while in iron deficiency anemia, it is low. 91. How does the amount of iron, total iron binding capacity, the percentage of iron bound to protein, and the amount of iron storage protein change in someone with cytoblastic anemia? And how is this anemia related to iron overload and heme synthesis, and how does it cause secondary iron overload? In cytoblastic anemia, the serum iron level increases, the total iron binding capacity decreases, the percentage saturation increases and the ferritin level increases. This is due to a defect in heme synthesis which causes iron overload. As the iron is not being utilized properly, it gets stored in the body leading to secondary iron overload, thus the serum iron increases and TIBC decreases. 92. What inherited hematologic pathology is associated with an increased MCHC? Hereditary spherocytosis, for example, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, elevated due to loss of RBC surface area. 93. What three vaccines should patients receive prior to undergoing splenectomy? Anti-pneumococcal, hemophilus, and meningococcal vaccines due to risk of overwhelming sepsis. Patients should also have daily oral penicillin prophylaxis until 5 years of age or for 3 to 5 years after splenectomy. 94. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with scattered petechiae with isolated thrombocytopenia? and enlarged platelets following a viral infection. Immune thrombocytopenia ITP most commonly occurs in children aged 2 to 5 following a viral infection. 95. What is the next step in management for a child with suspected immune thrombocytopenia that presents with mucosal bleeding? 
IVIG or corticosteroids. 96. Iron deficiency anemia can be differentiated from thalassemia by an elevated red cell distribution with RDW, typically greater than 20% in iron deficiency. 97. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with short stature, hypoplastic thumbs, and aplastic, macrocytic anemia? Fanconi anemia. 98. What inherited hematologic pathology is associated with a vascular necrosis osteonecrosis? Sickle cell disease patients typically present with chronic pain without signs of inflammation for example warmth, erythema, leukocytosis, elevated ESR. 99. What hematologic pathology is characterized by thrombocytopenia, maha, and acute renal failure following a diarrheal illness? Hemolytic uremic syndrome typically due to endothelial damage by drugs or infection, similar clinical presentation to TTP. What inclusion body is often found inside the RBCs of patients with G6PD deficiency? Heinz bodies visible on peripheral smear after using a crystal violet dye. 101. Heinz bodies form due to precipitation of denatured hemoglobin within RBCs. HB sulfhydryl groups donate an electron to hydrogen peroxide, forming hemoglobin crosslinks. 102. Web bone tumor is characterized by a sunburst pattern in Codman triangle on X-ray. Osteosarcoma. 103. What is the likely diagnosis in a well-appearing child that presents with a microcytic, hypochromic anemia with normal RBC count and RDW? Thalassemia minor normal RBC count and RDW help distinguish thalassemia from iron deficiency anemia low RBC count with high RDW. 104. Thalassemia is an anemia due to decreased synthesis of globin chains. 105. Thalassemia is an anemia due to decreased synthesis of globin chains. 106. Which coagulation disorder presents with hemarthrosis, easy bruising, and bleeding after surgery? Hemophilia clinical severity depends on degree of deficiency. 107. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with bitemporal hemianopsia and diabetes insipidus with calcified pituitary mass on imaging? Cranial pharyngioma. 108. What is the dose limiting side effect of hydroxyurea? Myelosuppression, for example, neutropenia, anemia, thrombocytopenia. What is the likely diagnosis in an African American infant that presents with symmetric swelling, tenderness of the bilateral hands and feet? Dactylitis secondary to sickle cell disease, also known as hand foot syndrome, usually presents between 6 months to 4 years of age. 110. W. Wiscott A. Aldrich T. E. Eczema R. Recurrent pyogenic infections. The symptoms of Wiscott Aldrich syndrome may be remembered with the mnemonic water. W. Wiscott A. Aldrich T. Thrombocytopenia fewer in smaller platelets. E. Eczema R. Recurrent pyogenic infections. 113. Wiscott Aldrich syndrome is characterized by inability for leukocytes in platelets to reorganize their actin cytoskeleton. Results in defective antigen presentation. 114. Von Jirk disease is characterized by severe fasting hypoglycemia. Efficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase prevents the breakdown of glycogen. 115. Medium chain of kill COA dehydrogenase MCAD deficiency is characterized by hypocatotic hypoglycemia. Due to impaired 2-oxidation app is needed for gluconogenesis. Acetyl COA is needed for ketogenesis. 116. What is the likely diagnosis in a newborn that presents with an enlarged tongue and jaundice with high TSH and low free T4? Congenital hypothyroidism routinely screened for in newborns. Additional symptoms include lethargy and umbilical hernia, though most patients are asymptomatic. 117. What is the next step in management for a healthy 12-year-old male that presents with delayed growth spurt, delayed puberty, and delayed bone age? Reassurance and follow-up This patient has constitutional growth delay and is expected to have a normal growth spurt and reach a normal adult height. Growth chart typically shows the child dropping percentiles on the growth curve between 6 months to 3 years of age before regaining normal growth velocity. 118. Cryptochidism is the failure of the testicle to descend into the scrotal sac. If not descended by six months, orchiopsy is performed before one year of age to prevent testicular torsion, improve fertility, and decrease risk of testicular malignancy. 119. Congenital hydrosal occurs due to incomplete obliteration of the processes vaginales in infants. 120. What is the likely diagnosis in an adolescent female that presents with amenorrhea with a non-palpable uterus and normal size ovaries on ultrasound? Malarian agenesis may arachitanxi custer hauser syndrome primary amenorrhea due to lack of uterine development. Still have normal ovaries with normal axillary and pubic hair complete androgen and sensitivity syndrome will have minimal to no axillary or pubic hair. 121. What kidney abnormality is associated with Turner syndrome? Horseshoe kidney. 122. What is the likely underlying etiology of painless, irregular, heavy menses in an adolescent girl that started menstruation one year ago? Immaturity of the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis results in anovulatory cycles, which causes abnormal uterine bleeding without ovulation. There is persistent endometrial proliferation that results in heavy menses when ovulation does occur. This is due to a lack of progesterone after ovulation, which causes unopposed estrogen. 
123. What is the likely diagnosis in a patient with pelvic cramping during the first few days of menses with a normal physical examination? Primary dysmenorrhea due to uterine contractions triggered by prostaglandin release from sloughing endometrium. 124. What is the likely diagnosis in a macrosomic newborn with crepitus over the clavicle and asymmetric moro reflex? Clavicular fracture secondary to shoulder dystocia diagnosis is confirmed with X-ray. 125. What is the next step in management for a macrosomic newborn with a clavicular fracture secondary to shoulder dystocia? Reassurance neonatal clavicular fractures usually heal spontaneously within 7 to 10 days. 126. Retinoblastoma is an eye cancer associated with a white reflex, rather than the normal red reflex. Known as leucoria, this finding should prompt referral to an ophthalmologist for further evaluation. 127. What is the likely diagnosis in a child staying in a refugee camp that presents with inflammation and thickening of the tarsal conjunctiva bilaterally? Trachoma repeated or chronic infection causes inversion of eyelashes and scarring of the cornea initially presents as a follicular conjunctivitis with neovascularization. 128. What is the recommended treatment for gonococcal conjunctivitis? Single dose of intramuscular third-generation cephalosporin for example ceftriaxone. 129. What is the recommended treatment for chlamydial conjunctivitis? Oral macrolide topical macrolides have a high failure rate. Systemic has advantage of treating for future chlamydia pneumonia as well. 130. Treatment of strabismus includes patching or blurring of the normal eye. Allows for strengthening of the deviated eye. 131. Chronic granulomatous disease is characterized by recurrent infection and granuloma formation with catalase-positive organisms, particularly Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas, Serratia, Nicardia, and Aspergillus. Common manifestations include pneumonia, skin abscesses, and suppurative adenitis chronic granulomatous disease path, deficiency of NADPH oxidase by neutrophils and macrophages, ingest but can't kill organisms clinical features, recurrent infections by catalase plus organisms S. aureus, Pseudomonas, Aspergillus, Nicardia sp. P. Burkholderia sepatia, serratia diagnosis, dihydrohydamine test flow cytometry showing abnormal neutrophil function treatment. Bone marrow transplant definitive. 135. The rotavirus vaccine is a live attenuated vaccine that is typically administered at age 2 to 6 months. 136. Which immunofficiency presence with recurrent infection, failure to thrive, chronic diarrhea, and thrush. Severe combined immunofficiency SCID. 137. Which immunofficiency presents with delayed separation of the umbilical cord greater than 21 days? Leukocyte adhesion deficiency. 138. Which immunofficiency is characterized by absent T-cell receptor excision circles TRECs in dried blood? Severe combined immunofficiency SCID TRECs are circular DNA excreted by developing T-cells in the thymus. This test is part of routine newborn screening. 139. What is the most common primary immunodeficiency? Selective IgA deficiency. 140. Which immunodeficiency is characterized by absent B cells in peripheral blood? X-linked Bruton agamaglobulinemia due to disordered B cell maturation. Pre and pro B cells cannot mature. 141. Which immunodeficiency is characterized by no B cell maturation? X-linked Bruton agamaglobulinemia versus 604, which is caused by poor B cell differentiation. 142. Which immunodeficiency presents with defective class switching? Hyper-IgM syndrome thus resulting in increased IgM with decreased IgA, IgG, and Ig. 143. Which immunodeficiency is associated with albinism? Chediakagashi syndrome melanocytes unable to distribute melanin to nearby keratinocytes. 144. Which immunodeficiency is characterized by giant granules and leukocytes and platelets? Chediakagashi syndrome due to fusion of granules arising from the Golgi apparatus. 145. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with persistent ear discharge, despite antibiotic treatment, with granulation tissue and skin debris visible on otoscopic exam? Colstetoma may be complicated by hearing loss, cranial nerve palsies, vertigo, and or infection. Colstetoma is a special form of chronic otitis media in which keratinizing squamous epithelium grows from the tympanic membrane or the auditory canal into the middle ear mucosa surgery is always indicated. 146. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with ear pain with a bulging, erythematous tympanic membrane on an otoscopic exam? Acute otitis media young children are predisposed to middle ear infections due to narrower and straighter eustachian tubes. 147. Otitis media with effusion can be distinguished from acute otitis media by the lack of acute inflammatory signs. For example, absence of fever and no bulging of the tympanic membrane. 148. What is the first-line treatment for acute otitis media? Oral amoxicillin if infection reoccurs within one month, amoxicillin clavulanic acid should be given to cover beta-lactamase resistant strains. 149. Myringotomy with tympanostomy tube placement should be considered in children with greater than 3 episodes of acute otitis media in 6 months or greater than 4 episodes in 12 months. 
150. Otitis externa is most commonly caused by infection with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Staphylococcus aureus is another common cause. 151. What is the recommended pharmacotherapy for otitis externa? Topical antibiotics, for example, fluoroquinolones, the antibiotic must cover for Pseudomonas malignant otitis externa treat with ciprofloxacin. 152. What is the likely diagnosis in a young child that presents with fever and a petechial rash on the lower extremities with a positive Brodzinski sign? Meningococcal meningitis. 153. Which type of meningitis presents with decreased glucose and increased PMNs in the CSF? Bacterial meningitis. 154. Which type of meningitis presents with decreased glucose and increased lymphocytes in the CSF? Fungal. TB meningitis tuberculous meningitis is also characterized by very high protein level in the CSF. 155. Where pathogens 2 are the most common cause of acute, unilateral lymphadenitis in children. Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes affected nodes are typically enlarged, tender, warm, and erythematous. 156. What test is used to screen for infectious mononucleosis? Monospot test 25% false negative rate during first week of illness may also be negative in patients with infectious mononucleosis secondary to CMV. 157. What is the first-line treatment for Bordetella pertussis infection? Macrolides. 158. What bacteria causes marked lymphocytosis via production of lymphocytosis promoting factor? Bordetella pertussis blocks circulating lymphocytes from leaving the blood to enter the lymph node. 159. What is the most common cause of osteomyelitis in both infants and children? Staphylococcus aureus in children. Osteomyelitis most often occurs in the metaphyses of bones highly vascular and develops secondary to hematogenous spread. 160. What is the next step in management for a child that presents with fever, pharyngitis with tonsillar exudates, and tender anterior cervical lymphadenopathy? Rapid streptococcal antigen testing gas pharyngitis in children should always be confirmed by rapid streptococcal antigen testing or throat culture prior to initiation of antibiotics versus adults, who can be treated empirically if they meet all Centaur criteria. 161. What is the recommended treatment for children with group of streptococcus pharyngitis? Oral penicillin or amoxicillin? 162. Which infectious skin disorder is a superficial bacterial skin infection characterized by honey-colored crusting? In pedigo. 163. What is the next step in management for an infant with suspected bacterial meningitis based on history and physical exam? Lumbar puncture followed by intravenous antibiotics for example vancomycin and a third-generation cephalosporin. Lumbar puncture can be performed safely in infants without CT imaging as the risk for herniation is low. 164. What is the recommended treatment for congenital toxoplasmosis? Pyrimphamine, sulfadiazine, and folate. 165. What is recommended treatment for pregnant women and children lesser than 8 years old with early localized Lyme disease? Oral amoxicillin oral doxycycline is contraindicated in these patients. Intravenous ceftriaxone is reserved for Lyme meningitis, encephalopathy, and carditis. Heart block localized or isolated CNC palsy, doxycycline adults, amoxicillin pregnant and pediatrics disseminated CNS, carditis, ceftriaxone. 166. What is the next step in management for a patient with a cat bite after thorough wound cleaning? Amoxicillin plus clavulanate. Prophylactic for possible Pasteurella multicida infection amoxicillin, as well as oral anaerobes clavulanate, wound closure should be avoided. 167. What organism is responsible for recurrent pulmonary infections in an adult with cystic fibrosis? Pseudomonas aeruginosa. 168. Which congenital infection is associated with limb hypoplasia, cataracts, and skin scars? Varicella zoster. 169. What is the most common cause of sepsis in patients with sickle cell disease? Streptococcus pneumoniae broad-spectrum empiric antibiotic ceftriaxone should be given to patients with SCD presenting with sepsis. 170. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with an inability to extend the neck with a widened pervertebral space on X-ray after having fever and sore throat for one week? Retropharyngeal abscess. 171. What is the likely diagnosis in an infant that presents with leg length discrepancy and asymmetric inguinal skin folds? Developmental dysplasia of the hip This diagnosis is further supported by a palpable clunk when performing the Barlow and Ortolani maneuvers. 172. What physical exam maneuvers are used to assess for developmental dysplasia of the hip? Bartlow and Ortolani maneuvers. 173. What is the preferred imaging modality for diagnosis of developmental dysplasia of the hip in infants lesser than 4 months old? Hip ultrasound. 174. What is the preferred imaging modality for diagnosis of developmental dysplasia of the hip in infants greater than 4 months old? Hip X-ray. 175. What is the likely diagnosis in a young boy that presents with 2 months of progressive hip pain with limited internal rotation, abduction? 
of the affected hip. Late calf Perth's disease idiopathic osteonecrosis of the femoral head that typically presents in boys age 4 to 10 years old, initial x-rays may be negative. 176. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis SCFE is characterized by external rotation of the thigh on hip flexion, also associated with limited abduction and internal rotation of the hip. 177. What is the recommended treatment for slipped capital femoral epiphysis SCFE? Immediate surgical pinning of the femoral head lessens the risk of a vascular necrosis of the femoral head and chondrolysis. 178. Osteoid osteoma presence with bone pain, especially at night, that does resolve with aspirin or NSAIDs. Important distinguishing feature from osteoblastoma. 179. What bone tumor is characterized by a bony mass with a radiolucent core on imaging? Osteoid osteoma. 180. Osteogenesis imperfecta is characterized by multiple fractures with minimal trauma. May occur during the birth process, can mimic child abuse, but bruising is absent. 181. What is the likely diagnosis in a child that presents with hip pain several days after a viral urine with normal physical exam, laboratory studies, and x-ray? Transient synovitis most common cause of hip pain in children. X-ray is needed to assess for leg calf perth's disease. 182. What is the likely diagnosis in a child with a supracondylar humerus fracture that complains of increasing pain despite multiple analgesics? Compartment syndrome supracondylar humerus fracture classically occurs in a child after a fall on an outstretched hand. Radiographs often reveal fat pads lucency anterior and posterior to the fracture, however. Racial artery and median nerve injury are much more common than compartment syndrome, so be careful how the question is phrased. 183. Treatment for Kawasaki disease includes aspirin and IVIG. Aspirin is given for its antithrombotic properties. This is an exception to the rule that children should never be given aspirin. 184. Ewing sarcoma is a bone tumor associated with a characteristic onion skin appearance on X-ray. Typically arises in white males in the first or second decade of life. 186. Treatment. Genuvarum is normal up to age 3, while genuvalgum is normal between 4 and 8. Treatment, reassurance and follow-up, if bow legs persist past 3 blount disease, surgery can be done. 187. Chylothorax is differentiated from other causes of exudative pleural effusion by its milky white color and elevated triglyceride levels. 188. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia is associated with pulmonary hypoplasia, may manifest as polyhydramnios on prenatal ultrasound. 189. Neonatal respiratory distress syndrome is respiratory distress due to inadequate surfactant levels. 190. Neonatal respiratory distress syndrome is associated with premature birth. Surfactant production doesn't begin until at least week 24 and in surfactant levels are insufficient until around week 35. 191. Neonatal respiratory distress syndrome is associated with diffuse granularity of the lung with a ground glass appearance on chest x-ray. 192. Treatment of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome includes early positive pressure ventilation plus or minus intubation. Artificial surfactant may also be helpful. 193. The APGAR score is an assessment of newborn vital signs following labor via a 10-point scale evaluated at 1 minute and 5 minutes. 194. What is the next step in management for a patient that needs emergency fluid resuscitation and peripheral intravenous access cannot be obtained? Attempt interosseous access requires less skill and practice than central line placement and is safer and faster. 195. At what age does an infant typically develop separation anxiety? 12 months considered normal in infants age 9 to 18 months. 196. What protein is defective in Marfan syndrome? Fibrillin scaffold for elastin due to mutations of the Fibrillin 1 gene. 197. What is the most common cause of death in Marfan? Syndrome patients. Aortic dissection secondary to aortic root dilation and cystic medial degeneration of the aorta. 198. What musculoskeletal pathology is associated with Turner syndrome? Osteoporosis estrogen deficiency leads to increased bone resorption. Estrogen typically inhibits osteoclast mediated bone resorption. 199. What genetic pathology is characterized by insatiable appetite hyperphagia, obesity, intellectual disability, and hypogonadism? Prater Willi syndrome also may result in hypotonia. 200. Both Prater Willi and Angelman syndrome are due to a mutation or deletion of genes on chromosome 15. 201. What genetic pathology is characterized by inappropriate laughter, seizures, ataxia, and severe intellectual disability? Angelman syndrome, happy puppet syndrome. 202. What genetic pathology is associated with microcephaly, intellectual disability, and a high-pitched cry? Cry du chat syndrome due to microdeletion of chromosome 5p. Also may have a protruding metopic suture, epicanthal folds, and cardiac abnormalities VSD. 
203. What genetic pathology is associated with elfin facies, intellectual disability, and extreme friendliness with strangers? Williams syndrome due to microdeletion of chromosome 7q also may have cardiovascular problems, supervalvular aortic stenosis, and hypercalcemia due to increased sensitivity to vitamin D. 204. Which sex chromosome disorder is associated with gynecomastia, female hair distribution, tall, long extremities, and unitroid body shape in a male? Kleinfelder syndrome 4, XXY. 205. What viral pathogens are most commonly associated with viral myocarditis? Coxsackie B and adenovirus. 206. What is the likely diagnosis in a young child that presents with failure to thrive and easy fatigue ability with a grade 2 holosystolic murmur best heard over the left sternal border with a diastolic rumble over the cardiac apex? Large ventricular septal defect VSD Larger VSDs tend to be quieter grade 2 due to less turbulence. The diastolic rumble is heard due to increased flow across the mitral valve. 207. 1. Pulmonary and fundibular stenosis 2. Right ventricular hypertrophy right axis deviation 3. Overriding aorta 4. Ventricular septal defect VSD tetralogy of fallout is a congenital heart disease that is characterized by 1. Pulmonary and fundibular stenosis 2. Right ventricular hypertrophy right axis deviation 3. Overriding aorta 4. Ventricular septal defect VSD mnemonic. Prove, overriding aorta is the positioning of the aorta directly over the VSD. 212. Patients with tetralogy of fallout often experience tet spells which may be caused by crying, fever, and exercise due to exacerbation of RV outflow tract obstruction. 213. Patients with tetralogy of fallout may squat in response to cyanotic spells, which decreases right-to-left shunting by increasing systemic vascular resistance SVR. Inhaled O2 may help stimulate pulmonary vacillation and systemic vasoconstriction, which can further decrease right-to-left shunting. 215. What heart abnormalities too are associated with Turner syndrome? Bicuspid aortic valve most common in cortation of the aorta patients may also develop aortic root dilation. 216. What is the likely diagnosis in a newborn that presents with cyanosis, a single loud S2 on auscultation no murmur, and a narrow mediastinum on x-ray? Transposition of the great vessels The narrow mediastinum is described as an egg on a string appearance TOF would have murmurs present VSD, etc. 217. What is the likely diagnosis in a cyanotic newborn with truncus arteriosus and an absent thymic shadow on x-ray? Di George syndrome Di George syndrome is associated with canotruncal heart defects including truncus arteriosus, tetralogy of fallout, and transposition of the great vessels. 218. Prominent J waves on ECG are typically indicative of hypothermia, also known as an Osborne wave. 219. What eye pathology is associated with juvenile idiopathic arthritis GIA? 220. Bowing of the legs is considered a normal variation in children up to two years old. For example, physiologic bowing of the legs, after two years old, bowing is pathologic for example tibia vara, also known as Blount's disease. 221. Aniridia is the absence of the iris. This finding in a newborn should prompt screening for Wilms tumor with abdominal ultrasound. 224. Fund application is a procedure used to treat severe gastroesophageal reflux GERD. 225. Excessive salivation shortly after birth or choking spells when first feeding is attempted is suspicious for esophageal atresia. Most common type. Tracheoesophageal fistula esophagus ends in blind pouch with fistula between esophagus and tracheobronchial tree workup. Past small NG tube will be coiled in upper chest when x-rays are done to rule out VACTERL treatment. Surgical repair, if needs to be delayed, gastrostomy to protect the lungs from acid reflux. 226. What is the diagnosis and treatment in a 7-month-old child who has colicky abdominal pain that causes her to bring her knees to her chest? Patient has RUQ mass and current jelly stools. Intussusception ultrasound, best initial test causing, donut or target sign. Barium or air enema is both diagnostic and therapeutic. Contrast enema using ultrasound or fluoroscopy best confirmatory test. 227. Maternal contraindications to breastfeeding include active untreated tuberculosis, HIV infection, and herpetic breast lesions. Other contraindications include varicella infection lesser than 5 days prior to or within 2 days of delivery and active abuse of street drugs or alcohol. 228. What is the larch? Onset of breast development as a result of release of estrogen adrenarch. Onset of pubic or axillary hair development in female as a result of release of adrenal androgens breast buds are usually the first sign of puberty 15% is pubic hair. 229. What is the first sign of puberty in a male? Testicular enlargement What is the function of FSH? Stimulates seminiferous tubules and testes to produce sperm LH. Stimulates latex cells to produce androgens causing penile enlargement and growth of axillary, facial, pubic hair hence latex cell tumors have virilization. 
230, two-year-old with visible breast tissue only with no other signs of other secondary sex characteristics, premature the large pathology. Transient activation of HPA hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis causing transient ovarian follicular stimulation and release of low levels of estrogen treatment. None very common and benign in first two years of life add flowchart of precocious puberty. 231. What is the treatment of premature the larch and premature adrenarch? None. 232. What imaging should be done in patients with central precocious puberty? MRI to rule out CNS lesions. 233. What are the four components of the workup for central precocious puberty? 1. FSH, LH, sex steroids 2. GnRH stimulation test inc. and LH3. MRI rule out CNS lesions 4. Thyroid R, O hypothyroidism. 234. Peripheral precocity is a GnRH independent process caused by excess secretion of sex hormones estrogens and or androgens from gonads or adrenal glands or from exogenous sources. What are the FSH and LH levels? Suppressed prepubertal range and do not increase with GnRH stimulation. 235. What should be suspected in a young boy with peripheral precocity and asymmetric testicular size? Latex cell tumor. 236. What will the FSH and LH levels be after GnRH administration in a patient with peripheral precocity? Suppressed FSH, LH will be suppressed with GnRH administration It is GnRH independent not mediated by FSH or LH. 237. What does APGAR stand for? Appearance, skin color, pulse, HR, grimace, reflex, irritability upon tactile stimulation, activity, muscle tone, movement, respirations, when are scores taken? 1 minute and 5 minutes, what is a reassuring score? 7 to 10. 238. What are the steps for neonatal resuscitation? Begin pulse ox. Positive pressure ventilation with bag mask if inadequate respiratory effort or HR lesser than 100 BPM. Chest compressions if HR is lesser than 60 BPM despite adequate ventilation for 30 intravenous epi if HR lesser than 60 BPM if ventilation and chest compressions don't work. 239. What preventive measures are taken directly after birth? 1. Ophthalmic antibiotics to prevent gonococcal conjunctivitis or erythromycin 2. Vitamin K prevents bleeding done after suctioning, warming the baby, etc. 240. When should the first passage of urine and meconium occur in a newborn? Two hundred forty-one. What are the consequences of intrauterine estrogen exposure? Breast bud development is normal in infants of either gender. Newborn girls have bloody or mucoid vaginal discharge, the most common cause of vaginal bleeding in neonate due to maternal estrogen crossing the placenta and stimulating growth of the fetal endometrial lining. Withdrawal bleeding occurs one to two weeks after delivery and is self-limited. 242. What is the appearance of the labia in a newborn? The labia minor is covered by the labia majora in newborns due to placental hormones recedes after a few days if you rotate in the well baby nursery. You'll notice that the labia looks really swollen and parents are often concerned. 243. Infant two hours after birth has elevated hematocrit greater than 65%, respiratory distress, hypoglycemia, cyanosis, and plethora. This is likely due to intrauterine hypoxia. Risk factors. Smoking, maternal diabetes, small or large for gestational age. 244. Increased venous hematocrit greater than 65% in newborn indicates neonatal polycythemia. Pathophysiology. Transfusion. Delayed umbilical cord clamping erythrocyte transfusion from mother's hematocrit. Twin twin, chronic intrauterine hypoxia, intrauterine erythropoiesis, hematocrit maternal gestational diabetes, fetal hyperinsulinemia, Inc. O2 demand EPO clinical features, respiratory distress, cyanosis, hypoglycemia, Inc. RBC use, plethora treatment, hydration, possible partial exchange transfusion, blood replaced with isotonic fluid to lower hematocrit. Plethora means that there is excessive body fluid, specifically blood or circulating RBCs, or facial flushing, erythema due to increased red blood cell mass commonly caused by hypoxia, which triggers increased secretion of erythropoietin. 245. Benign blue-gray pigmented skin lesion in newborn, congenital dermal melanocytosis. Mongolian spot. Pathogenesis low yield. Melanocytes migrate from neural crest to epidermis during development become entrapped in the dermis treatment. Prognosis. None. Resolves by age 5. May be mistaken for child abuse, so important to diagnose them early. 246. Chonal atresia is associated with CHARGE syndrome, coloboma heart defects, atresia choni, chonal atresia retardation of growth, genital abnormalities, ear abnormalities. 248. What precursors are seen in the congenital adrenal hyperplasias? In congenital adrenal hyperplasia, certain precursor hormones are overproduced or underproduced. For example, in 21 hydroxylase deficiency there is an overproduction of 17 hydroxyprogesterone and in 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency there is an underproduction of a weak mineralocorticoid called deoxycorticosterone. In 17 hydroxylase deficiency there is an overproduction of corticosterone. 
To diagnose the condition, doctors will check the levels of these precursor hormones, along with other measurements like electrolyte levels, blood pressure, and symptoms to determine if it is hyper or hypoaldosteronism. 249. Rapid Diagnosis A 13-year-old patient presents with severe acne, precocious puberty that began at age 8, and accelerated bone maturation. They have been administered ACTH and have been found to have high levels of 17 progesterone androstenedione, DHEAS, and low levels of deoxycorticosterone and cortisol. This is indicative of a late-onset form of congenital adrenal hyperplasia caused by a deficiency in the 21-alpha-hydroxylase enzyme. This form of the condition can present either as a classic case at birth or as a non-classic case later in life. Despite the administration of a CTH, there is a deficiency in the production of cortisol and deoxycorticosterone, which are hormones that are important for maintaining the body's electrolyte balance and response to stress. 250. Rapid Diagnosis Six-month-old boy presence with recurrent upper respiratory infections. Flow cytometry shows absent B cells and normal T cell count. Bruton's X-linked agamaglobulinemia, IVIG and prophylaxis with antibiotics. 251. What is common variable immunodeficiency? Immunodeficiency with low serum levels of all egg despite phenotypically normal B cells. B cells are unable to differentiate into egg producing cells diagnosis. Low egg G, egg A, egg M, flow cytometry shows normal B and T cell populations versus Bruton's, low egg, absent, low B cells, normal T cells treatment. Prophylaxis antibiotics and IVIG usually presence at an older age. 252. Rapid diagnosis. Young child presence with features of disseminated tuberculosis following administration of BCG vaccine. IL-12 receptor deficiency IFN gamma. Mycobacteria, Salmonella are the common pathogens. Intracellular Salmonella and Mycobacterial infections most common clinical features. Features of disseminated disease especially, TB, for example, following BCG vaccine administration, fungal infections diagnosis, IFNY treatment, AB, IFNY therapy. 253. What tests are used for the diagnosis of SCID? Quantitative PCR, problem with T-cell receptor expression circles TRECs. Absent T-cells. Chest X-ray, absence of thymic shadow. Lymph node biopsy shows absence of germinal centers. 254. What is the pathogenesis of Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome? Mutated was protein-causing, impaired actin reorganization clinical presentation. Water, Wiscott-Aldrich, thrombocytopic purpura, eczema, recurrent infections. 255. Hyper-IgM syndrome pathogenesis. Defective CD40L deficiency causing. Defective class switching clinical presentation AMD most common infections. Recurrent cinepulmonary infections pneumocystis, histoplasma, cryptosporidium enteritis bilayary disease cirrhosis. Chalandia carcinomac MV hepatitis diagnosis. Normal or IgM, IgG, A, E treatment, IVIG, prophylax with antibiotic. Recombinant human GCSF. 256. What is the triad of ataxia telangiectasia? Ataxia, angiomas telangiectasias, IgA deficiency also athetosis writhing of hands, toes increased risk of what malignancies? Lymphoma, leukemia a T-cell defect causes susceptibility to infections for example, ear infections, sinusitis, pneumonia, malignancy for example non-Hodgkin lymphoma, leukemia, and increased sensitivity to radiation. 257. What reflexes assist in breastfeeding? Rooting reflex, which causes the baby to turn their head towards a touch on their cheek. The sucking reflex, which causes the baby to suck when something touches their lips. And the snout reflex, which causes the baby to pucker their lips and open their mouth when pressure is applied to their closed lips. It's important to know that reappearance of these reflexes in an adult can be a sign of central neurogenerative or vascular disease, often affecting the frontal lobes. This may indicate that the brain damage has compromised the function of the brain's motor cortex which controls these reflexes. It can be indicative of a serious condition like stroke, dementia, or other neurological disorder. If you see these signs in an adult, it's important to seek medical attention as soon as possible. 258. Birth weight should double by 4 months and triple by 1 year of age. Height at 1 year of age should be 50% more than birth height. 259. Is on-demand breastfeeding recommended? Yes. What are the advantages to breastfeeding? Better GI function, motility due to hormones for example, cortisol, insulin-like growth factor, enzymes, oligosaccharides, and immunoglobulins contained in milk. Passive immunity infections long-term benefits, lower risk of obesity, cardiovascular disease, DM, cancer the infant may bring hands to mouth, suck its fists, get irritable, and cry when hungry. 260. A postpartum mother with hepatitis infection wants to know if she is able to breastfeed. 
Yes, Hep B and C are not contraindicated. Contraindications for breastfeeding maternal HIV infection, active tuberculosis, current drug, alcohol abuse, and certain medications, for example, tetracycline, chloramphenicol. Chemotherapy agents fetal factors include galactosemia, phenylketonuria, and maple syrup urine disease. Maternal hepatitis B or C infections are not contraindications to breastfeeding. 261. What supplementation does an infant require? Vitamin D supplementation. Breastfed infants should receive daily until they start cow's milk at one year. Infants on formula do not require Vit D plus iron. For mature infants and infants up to six months. Breast milk is low in B12 if mom is a vegan. 262. Mother says she is a vegan and wants to know if she should give her child any more supplements. Besides withholding judgment for her incredible life choices and resisting the urge to call CPS, what do you say? Give B12 supplementation. 263. What are the key social development milestones? 2 month. Social smile 4 month. Minus 6 month. Stranger danger. 1 year. Separation. Anxiety. 2 year. 2 step commands. 264. A eustachian tube connects the middle ear with the nasopharynx and drains middle ear secretions into the nasopharynx. Why are infants more prone to developing acute otitis media? Tube is short, wide, and horizontal, thus nasopharyngeal secretions easily reflex into middle ear obstruction, blockage of ECK causing, lack of ventilate and drainage of middle ear causing, accumulation and bacterial superinfection causing, bulging tympanic membrane. 265. What causes otitis media? The most common causes of otitis media are bacteria called S. pneumo, M. catarrhales, and H. influenza. What are the signs of an otitis media? Some signs of an ear infection are pain that gets better when you pull on the ear lobe. The light reflex in the eye is not there anymore. The eardrum looks red and swollen. Children who have an ear infection might touch their ear a lot. How can an otitis media be diagnosed? A doctor can look into the ear with a special tool to see if the eardrum looks tense and rigid when pressure is changed in the ear. What is the treatment for otitis media? The treatment for an ear infection usually involves taking antibiotics, such as amoxicillin, for several days. If the infection does not go away, the doctor may give a different antibiotic, such as amoxclav. If a child gets more than three ear infections in six months, or more than four in one year, the doctor may suggest a surgery to repair the eardrum. If a child is allergic to penicillin, the doctor will give an alternative antibiotic. If the child has had a severe allergic reaction in the past, the doctor will take special care while giving the antibiotics. 266. Rapid Diagnosis Diagnosis of Otitis Media, Pneumatic Otoscopy Insufflation Clinical Presentation, Bulging Tympanic Membrane and Loss of White Reflex 267. Rapid Diagnosis What is the Treatment of Acute Otitis Media? Oral Amoxicillin or Amox Clav Augmentin if no improvement, Tympanoplasty if recurrent greater than 3 episodes in 6 months. 268. How do you differentiate between otitis media and externa based on symptoms? With otitis externa, the pain is worse when you pull on pinna. 269. What is the classical presentation of mastoiditis? Acute otitis media plus swelling, tender mastoid. Ear displaced anteriorly diagnosis. Clinical, CT scan opacification of mastoid ear cells treatment. Antibiotics vancomycin lots of variability in antibiotics. Surgical, tympanostomy for early stages, mastoidectomy if no improvement. 270. What are the most common causes of sinusitis in children? The most common cause of sinusitis in children is a viral infection, followed by an upper respiratory infection. Bacteria such as S. pneumo, H. influenza, and M. catarrhales are also possible causes. What are the symptoms of sinusitis caused by bacteria? Symptoms of sinusitis caused by bacteria may include congestion, discharge from the nose or sinuses that is thick and yellow or green in color, and pain in the face when the sinuses are touched. How is sinusitis diagnosed in children? Sinusitis in children is usually diagnosed based on the symptoms they are experiencing, without needing any imaging tests. If the symptoms do not improve or if the child has recurrent infections, a CT scan may be done. What is the treatment for sinusitis in children? The treatment for sinusitis in children is generally supportive and may include rest and fluids. If the infection is caused by a virus, antibiotics are not necessary. However, if symptoms are caused by bacteria, antibiotics may be prescribed such as amoxclav. If a child has a temperature above 38 degrees Celsius and symptoms last for more than 10 days, or if the child experiences facial pain, antibiotics may be prescribed. If symptoms improve and then worsen again, or if symptoms last for more than 3 months, the child should see an ear, nose, and throat specialist for further evaluation and treatment. It is important to note that antihistamines should not be used unless concurrent allergies are present. 271. Group of strep pharyngitis will present with anterior chain lymphadenopathy, while EBV will have posterior chain lymphadenopathy. 272. What are the diagnostic criteria for pharyngitis? One way to diagnose pharyngitis is by using the modified Centaur criteria, which includes the following. 
Cough is absent, plus one point. Exudates are present in the throat, plus one point. Swelling of the lymph nodes in the front of the neck, plus one point. Temperature is above 38 degrees Celsius, plus one point. The modified Centaur criteria score is calculated by adding these point, and it ranges from zero to four. The higher the score, the more likely the infection is bacterial. What is the treatment for pharyngitis? Treatment for pharyngitis depends on the modified Centaur score. If the score is less than one, no treatment is needed as it's likely viral. If the score is between 2 and 3, a rapid strep throat culture can be done, but since it takes too long, antibiotics might be prescribed. If the score is 4 or higher, antibiotics is the first line of treatment with penicillin or amoxicillin. Penicillin allergy, erythromycin. It's important to note that pharyngitis with an absent cough can modify the score. It's always recommended to consult with a physician in cases of pharyngitis to determine the best course of treatment. 273. Trichates should be suspected in patients with airway obstruction stridor, seal-like cough following viral prodrome that does not improve with racemic epi. 274. What are the differentials for hot potato voice? Epiglottitis, retropharyngeal abscess, or peritonsillar abscess? 275. What are the key symptoms of a retropharyngeal abscess? The key symptoms of a retropharyngeal abscess are toxic appearance, neck asymmetry with unilateral swelling, difficulty extending the neck, torticollis, swelling of lymph nodes in the front of the neck. How does retropharyngeal abscess differ from a peritonsillar abscess? A peritonsillar abscess, also known as a quinsy, has similar symptoms but some distinct differences from a retropharyngeal abscess. Uvular deviation. Trismus. How is a retropharyngeal abscess diagnosed? Retropharyngeal abscess is typically diagnosed with a CT scan. What is the treatment for retropharyngeal abscess? The treatment for retropharyngeal abscess includes airway management if needed to ensure that the person can breathe properly, incision and drainage to remove the pus, followed by intravenous antibiotics to help clear the infection. It is important to note that retropharyngeal abscess is a serious condition that requires prompt medical attention. It can progress quickly to cause severe airway obstruction or sepsis if left untreated. 276. What are the key symptoms of a peritonsillar abscess? Peritonsillar abscess, also known as quinsy, is a serious complication of tonsillitis and common in older children and young adults. The key symptoms of a peritonsillar abscess include older age, hot potato voice, drooling, uvular deviation, Trismus. How is a peritonsillar abscess diagnosed? Peritonsillar abscess is typically diagnosed based on a clinical examination by a healthcare professional. What is the treatment for peritonsillar abscess? The treatment for peritonsillar abscess includes airway management if needed to ensure that the person can breathe properly, incision and drainage to remove the pus, followed by intravenous antibiotics to help clear the infection. Trismus is the key feature that differentiates peritonsillar abscess from tonsillitis. It's important to seek medical attention as soon as symptoms appear, as peritonsillar abscess can cause airway obstruction and other serious complication if left untreated. 277. What is the main complication of retropharyngeal abscess? Acute necrotizing mediastinitis widened mediastinum. 278. Adenoid hypertrophy is hyperplasia of the pharyngeal tonsils and is the most common cause of nasal obstruction in children. 279. What are the systemic side effects of diphtheria and how do you diagnose? Myocarditis or hythmias, conduct multiple ECGs. 280. What is the treatment for a child who experiences shortness of breath and wheezing when playing sports? Saba before exercise. 281. The most common cause of bronchiolitis is respiratory syncytial virus. What is the presentation of bronchiolitis? Bronchiolitis typically presents in the winter and affects young children under the age of 2. It starts as an upper respiratory tract infection and is followed by wheezing and difficulty breathing. How is bronchiolitis diagnosed? Bronchiolitis is usually diagnosed clinically, and in some cases, a RSV panel test can be used to confirm the diagnosis. However, the test result does not change the treatment. What is the treatment and prevention for bronchiolitis? The treatment for bronchiolitis is primarily supportive, and may include admitting the child to the hospital for oxygen and fluids. It is important not to give bronchodilators, steroids, or antibiotics as they have been shown to be ineffective and unnecessary. Prevention of bronchiolitis includes Talavizumab is a medication that can be given as a prophylaxis to certain high-risk infants and young children to reduce the severity of RSV infections and hospitalizations. Hand hygiene and respiratory hygiene like frequent hand washing and covering the mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing. Avoiding close contact with people who are sick. Avoiding touching the eyes, nose, and mouth. Cleaning and disinfecting frequently touched surfaces and objects. It's always recommended to consult with a healthcare professional to evaluate the best course of treatment and prevention for a child with bronchiolitis. 282. What are the symptoms of tracheoesophageal fistula and esophageal atresia? Tracheoesophageal fistula and esophageal atresia are congenital conditions that occur when the esophagus and trachea are not properly connected. The symptoms typically present on the first day of life and include 
non-bilious projectile vomiting, gurgling or bubbling sounds when breathing due to gastric secretions entering the trachea. Polyhydramnios may also be present. How is tracheesophageal fistula and esophageal atresia diagnosed? The condition is typically diagnosed by observing NG tube coils on a chest X-ray. What is the treatment for tracheesophageal fistula and esophageal atresia? The treatment for tracheesophageal fistula and esophageal atresia usually involves moving the patient to a special type of feeding called total parenteral nutrition, surgery to correct the abnormal connection between the trachea and esophagus and to create an opening in the atretic esophagus. It's important to note that this is a serious condition that requires prompt medical attention. The surgery is usually done within the first few days of life and the outcome usually depends on the severity of the abnormality, timing of repair and the experience of the surgeon. 283. Rapid diagnosis, recurrent attacks of vomiting in child with typical pattern, no anatomical abnormalities, normal health between episodes, cyclic vomiting syndrome, treatment is supportive and be sure to avoid possible triggers, weirdly associated with a history of migraine headaches in the parents. 284. Hereditary spherocytosis is due to a defect in RBC membrane proteins spectrin and or ankurin. Loss of outer lipid bilayer causing, loss of surface area causing, sphere-shaped RBCs with decreased membrane stability. 286. What is the pathophysiology of hereditary spherocytosis? Spectrum and, or anchorin defect in RBC membrane causing, loss of structure causing, sphere-shaped splenungally entrapment extravascular hemolysis secondary to splenic macrophage destruction lab findings. Normocytic anemia MCHC. 287. Rapid diagnosis acute onset bilious vomiting in 3-week-old, distended abdomen, no gas in the small intestine. Diagnosis and workup, intestinal malrotation with midgut volvulus x-ray and upper GI series fluoroscopy of upper GI tract with barium or water-soluble contrast fluoroscopy is a study of moving body structures x-ray movie. 288. In 5% of newborns with neonatal gynecomastia, galactoria is also present. Treatment of both. Reassurance results within 2 weeks but up to 1 year of life. 289. How should patients with T1D manage their insulin when exercising? Exercise increases insulin sensitivity decrease insulin dosage by 1 to 2 units per 20 to 30 minutes of physical activity monitor glucose before, during, after exercise eat slowly absorbed carbs after exercise to prevent delayed hypoglycemia. 290. What is the pathogenesis of Fragile X? FMR1 gene. This gene can express the gene product due to CGG trinucleotide repeat expansion. What are the clinical features? Extra large ears, testes, face long also known as dolicosphaly and narrow, mitral valve prolapse, FMR fragile X equals familial mental retardation X gene. 291. A smooth philtrum is a classic sign of fetal alcohol syndrome. 292. What are common pathogens found in bite wounds caused by animals? Bite wounds caused by animals can be infected with a variety of pathogens, but some common ones include Pasturella multicida, which is commonly found in the mouths of cats. Capacitophaga canamorsis, which is commonly found in the mouths of dogs. Anaerobic bacteria, which thrive in the absence of oxygen. In addition, it is important to consider the risk of rabies in cases of dog bites, especially if the animal is wild or not properly vaccinated, since rabies can be transmitted to humans via a bite from an infected animal. What is the management for bite wounds caused by animals? The management for bite wounds caused by animals typically includes irrigation and debridement of the wound, allowing the wound to heal spontaneously unless it is on the face, antibiotics such as augmentin or amoxicillin clavulanate to prevent or treat infection, tetanus prophylaxis if the person has not had a tetanus vaccination in the last five years or if the wound is dirty or deep. It is important to seek medical attention right away if a bite wound is suspected and monitor for signs of infection such as redness, swelling, warmth, or pus in the wound, as well as fever, red streaking, and swollen lymph nodes. 293. What is the risk of a neonate developing chronic hepatitis B if the mother has active hep B infection? 90% treatment of newborn. HB vaccine plus HBIG is breastfeeding allowed. Yes. 294. What are the causes of iron deficiency anemia in young children? Excessive intake of cow's milk low in iron greater than 24 ounces divided by day. Delayed introduction of solid cereal-rich diet low in iron but usually fortified treatment. Iron supplementation. 295. What is the most likely diagnosis in a child lesser than 10 with abdominal pain, jaundice, and palpable mass? By Lyre cyst. 296. What is the presentation of measles rubiola, prodrome of cough, coriza, conjunctivitis, and coplic spots followed by maculopapular cephalocaudal rash spares palms and soles what precautions should be taken? Transmitted via respiratory particles isolate and place on airborne precautions negative pressure room, N95 face mask for healthcare personnel. 297. Newborn boy presents three days after delivery with tachypnea, tachycardia, spasms, seizures. Labs show PTH, calcium. The remainder of the exam shows no abnormalities. 
most likely cause. Maternal familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia asks so may go undiagnosed maternal hypercalcemia causes hypercalcemia in fetus suppression of parathyroid glands after. Delivery, fetus presence with hypoparathyroidism and hypocalcemia. Differential diagnosis equals die George will have CATCH22 features as well. 298. What are some ways to reduce the risk of transmission of HIV during pregnancy? There are several strategies that can be used to reduce the risk of HIV transmission during pregnancy. Combined antiretroviral therapy is recommended throughout pregnancy to suppress the viral load and reduce the risk of mother-to-child transmission. Caesarean delivery is recommended if the viral load is above 1,000 copies ML at the time of delivery, as it significantly reduces the risk of mother-to-child transmission during birth. HIV post-exposure prophylaxis with the antiretroviral drug zitivudine is given to the newborn to further reduce the risk of transmission. Avoiding breastfeeding, as it increases the risk of transmission, even with treatment, the risk is lower than 2%. If the viral load is less than 1,000 copies, ML and the mother is on cart, vaginal delivery combined with HIV post-exposure prophylaxis to the newborn may be considered as an option. It's important to note that, as always, it's important to consult with a healthcare provider, obstetrician or HIV specialist to evaluate the best course of action and treatment plan tailored to the individual needs and medical history. 299. What is the treatment? Administration route of chlamydial conjunctivitis. Oral erythromycin assume upper respiratory tract is also infected, so do systemic administration to prevent pneumonia. 300. What is the treatment of measles? Supportive with vitamin A supplementation vitamin A enhances barrier function and immunity of ocular, resp, and GI epithelium. 301. Cystic fibrosis has very similar respiratory tract features as what other disease? Primary ciliary dyskinesia dec. Nucociliary clearance what are the differentiating features? PCD, citizen versus, infertility, normal growth infertility secondary to amodile spermatozoa. Cystic fibrosis causes pancreatic insufficiency bruising secondary to vitamin D loss. Bleeding secondary to vitamin K loss, infertility, failure to thrive infertility secondary to absent vas deferens. 302. Which humoral immunodeficiency syndromes have low egg in all classes? Brute next linked agamaglobulinemia, 604. 303. What is the etiology of Ray syndrome? Ray syndrome is a rare but serious condition that primarily affects children and teenagers. It is characterized by liver failure and brain dysfunction and it is caused by the use of aspirin during influenza or varicella infections. The virus alters the liver's metabolism of salicylates, causing an accumulation of these substances in the liver which leads to injury and failure. What are the clinical features of Ray syndrome? The clinical features of Ray syndrome typically include a preceding viral illness such as influenza or chickenpox, encephalopathy and liver failure, increased intracranial pressure caused by hyperammonemia, which leads to swelling of the brain and causes an increase in the opening pressure on a lumbar puncture. This is a major cause of death in Ray syndrome. How is Ray syndrome diagnosed? Elevated levels of liver enzymes in the blood, increased opening pressure on a lumbar puncture, normal protein and white blood cell count, and low glucose levels. What is the treatment for Ray syndrome? The treatment for Ray syndrome is primarily supportive and may include measures to decrease ICP, correct hypoglycemia, and address other complications as they arise. It is important to avoid the use of aspirin in patients under 19 years of age, especially in patients with a febrile illness, except in the cases of Kawasaki disease or juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, as these conditions require specific treatment. It's important to seek medical attention immediately if a child or teenager has symptoms of Ray syndrome as it can progress rapidly. 304. What is the etiology of Henox gonline purpura? Henox gonline purpura is a type of vasculitis that affects small blood vessels and it's caused by the deposition of immunoglobulin and immune complexes in the walls of the blood vessels in the skin, gastrointestinal tract, joints, and kidneys. It most commonly occurs after a respiratory tract infection. What are the clinical features of HSP? The clinical features of HSP typically occur one to three weeks after a urea and include the following tetrad. Palpable purpura, arthritis or arthralgia, abdominal pain, nephritic syndrome. How is HSP diagnosed? HSP is typically diagnosed based on the clinical presentation, hematuria and proteinuria. The platelet count may be normal or elevated, which helps distinguish it from other causes of purpura that present with thrombocytopenia. What is the treatment for HSP? The treatment for HSP is primarily supportive and may include measures to alleviate symptoms and prevent complications. In cases with severe symptoms, glucocorticoids may be used to reduce inflammation. What are the complications of HSP? Complications of HSP can include joint destruction, kidney damage, and blood clots. One complication specifically is intussusception, a condition in which a part of the intestine folds into the next part of the intestine, causing obstruction. 306. What are the features of Sturge-Weber syndrome? 
Port wine stain nevus flamius, birthmark in V1 and V2 on face vascular malformations of choroid and CNS on same side as port wine stain early onset glaucoma cupped optic disc contralateral seizures, hyporeflexia, hypotonia secondary to leptomeningeal angioma angioma on same side as port wine stain. 307. Need to make sure this is not the patient's only functioning thyroid tissue and need to prevent post opus hypothyroidism. 308. A 12 year old presence who is obese with right groin pain and is limping. Physical shows passive external rotation. There is external rotation and abduction during passive flexion of affected hip draymond sign. Disease. Slip capital femoral epiphysis peak 10 to 16 years. Most common hip disorder in adolescence confirmatory test. X ray widening of joint space. Femoral head is placed posteriorly and inferiorly. Treatment, internal fixation with pinning of femoral head. 309. What is vesicurateral reflux? Retrograde flow of urine from bladder to ureter most commonly due to congenital defect of terminal portion of ureter symptoms. Recurrent UTIs in neonate, child diagnosis. UA, urine culture. Ultrasound, contrast voiding cyst urethrogram, indicated in, greater than two episodes of febrile UTIs renal anomaly detected on ultrasound. Findings, retrograde reflux of contrast into ureters during micturition is. Diagnostic of VUR cyst urethrogram, contrast instilled into bladder through Foley, images obtained via fluoroscopy while child is voiding. 310. What is the most likely diagnosis in a premature baby with onset of symptoms 30 minutes after birth of tachypnea, nasal flaring, subcostal retractions, decreased breath sounds, and cyanosis? Respiratory distress syndrome secondary to surfactant deficiency surfactant loss increased surface tension atelectasis and decreased compliance hypozemia and hypercapnia. What is the treatment? Nasal CPAP with PEEP of 3 to 8 cm H2O prevents collapse administration of artificial surfactant within 2 hours postpartum. Differential diagnosis is transient tachypnea of the newborn also known as wet lung disease. Full-term neonates born by cesarean section lungs full of fluid therapy should focus on supportive care. 311. Differential diagnosis of respiratory distress syndrome in preterm infants. Transient tachypnea of the newborn. This is a reversible respiratory disorder, also known as wet lung disease. It occurs in full-term infants born by cesarean section, in whom the lungs are still filled with fluid. X-ray may show fluid in the lung fissures. Treatment is supportive. Meconium aspiration syndrome. This occurs in post-term neonates with meconium aspiration. A neonate who is unresponsive and has green amniotic fluid established the diagnosis. Treatment is emergency intubation. Other possible diagnoses that can cause respiratory distress in preterm infants include congenital diaphragmatic hernia, a congenital abnormality in which the diaphragm doesn't form properly and the abdominal organs herniate into the chest. Pneumothorax, a condition in which air or gas leaks into the pleural space between the lung and the chest wall. Neonatal pneumonia, inflammation of the lungs caused by an infection. Sepsis, a general term used to describe a severe bacterial infection that can spread through the bloodstream to the whole body. Lung hypoplasia, a congenital condition in which the lungs are underdeveloped and unable to function properly. It's important to note that these conditions can overlap or coexist, so a thorough evaluation and diagnostic tests such as chest x-ray, blood culture and other lab tests is crucial to determine the correct diagnosis and appropriate treatment. 312. What is the treatment of status epilepticus? Benzos and more benzos. If Lorase Pam alone fails, then add phosphonatoin plus or phenobarbital to induce general anesthesia. 313. When can discontinue anti-epileptic medications in someone with a history of unprovoked seizures? Seizure-free for two years. 314. Simple febrile seizures have some diagnostic criteria. The seizure lasts for less than 15 minutes. The seizure is generalized, which means it affects both sides of the body. The child has a fever, but no other signs of serious illness. Treatment for simple febrile seizures involves using a benzodiazepine such as lorazepam to stop the seizure if it's ongoing. Providing antipyretics such as acetam and often to decrease fever and prevent recurrence of the seizure. No imaging studies are needed and not recommended as it doesn't change management. Complex febrile seizures. A complex febrile seizure is one that doesn't meet the above criteria, such as lasting longer than 15 minutes, focal, meaning it affects only one side of the body, or prolonged, associated with other signs of serious illness, such as persistent vomiting or lethargy, recurrent within a 24-hour period. Treatment for complex febrile seizures includes using a benzodiazepine to stop the seizure if it's ongoing, lumbar puncture to rule out meningitis or encephalitis, Egan imaging studies such as CT or MRI to evaluate for underlying structural abnormalities in the brain, close follow-up with a pediatric neurologist, 
It's important to reassure the parents that febrile seizures are relatively common and are not typically associated with long-term complications or neurological disorders. Most of the children who have febrile seizures will not develop any future seizure disorders. However, if there is a family history of seizure disorder or the child has multiple seizures or prolonged seizures, additional evaluation may be recommended. 315. What drugs should be given to abort a febrile seizure? Lorase Pam, Benzo. When is imaging indicated? If complex, lumbar puncture, EEG, CT or MRI. 316. Infantile spasms West syndrome symptoms. Lesser than one year with symmetrical limb jerking, not generalized, fever diagnosis. Interictal league with hypsarrhythmia. Treatment, as CTH. 317. Lennox Gastaut syndrome age. 3 to 5 years versus. Lesser than one year in West syndrome patient. Development delay or loss of milestones after onset of seizures treatment. Anticonvulsant therapy, ketogenic diet. 318. What is tuberous sclerosis? Tuberous sclerosis is a genetic disorder that causes benign tumors to form in multiple organ systems, including the brain, skin, heart, lungs, and kidneys. The exact cause of the disorder is not well understood, but it is known to be caused by mutations in tumor suppressor genes TSC1 or TSC2. What are the symptoms of tuberous sclerosis? The symptoms of tuberous sclerosis vary depending on the age of the individual and which organ systems are affected. Infants under 2 years old, infantile spasms, developmental delays, and neonatal cardiac rhabdomyomas are common in this age group. Children, ash leaf spots, hypopigmented spots visible with a wood lamp, angiofibromas, seizures, developmental delays, and rhabdomyomas are common symptoms. Adolescents and adults, chagrin patches, angiomyolipomas, subependymal astrocyte proliferation in the brain, hematomas. How is tuberous sclerosis diagnosed? Tuberous sclerosis is typically diagnosed based on the characteristic symptoms and clinical examination, as well as imaging studies such as MRI, CT scans, and angiograms which can reveal hyperdense calcifications in affected organ systems. Genetic testing can confirm the diagnosis but it is not typically done as the clinical examination and imaging studies are diagnostic enough. What is the treatment for tuberous sclerosis? Treatment for tuberous sclerosis is primarily supportive and may include medications to manage seizures, surgery to remove tumors that are causing symptoms, monitoring for the development of new tumors. This is critical as it is a lifelong condition. Monitoring for complications such as kidney failure, heart problems, and other medical issues that can occur. It's important to note that the management of the condition is multidisciplinary and often involves the coordination of care between different specialties such as neurology, nephrology, and cardiology. 319. What is the gender disparity of fibromuscular dysplasia in children? Males equals females versus adults 8 to 1 female, male clinical features. Renal, secondary hypertension, abdominal brute at costovertebral angle. CKD symptoms, cerebrovascular, involves carotids, causing headache, pulsatile tinnitus, TIA. Cervical brute diagnostics, duplex ultrasound and or CT angio. 320. What recommendations should be given for avoiding neonatal listeriosis? Avoid unpasteurized milk products like milk, cheese symptoms, granulomatosis infantispica, systemic disease fever, hypotonia, respiratory distress imaging shows systemic abscesses, granulomas. 321. Who should receive pertussis post-exposure prophylaxis? Everyone household and close contacts of infected people regardless of immunization status what is the treatment? Prophylaxis. Lesser than one month. Azithromycin or erythromycin has greatest risk of pyloric stenosis greater than one month, any macrolide. 322. This kid obviously swallowed some shit. What is the next best step? Flexible endoscopy it's stuck in esophagus, not trachea for example, flexible bronchoscopy. 323. How do you differentiate between cephalohematoma, caput succedaneum, and subgalal hemorrhage? Cephalohematoma is a bump on the head that appears a few hours after birth. It doesn't cross the natural lines on the skull, usually appears lopsided, and is caused by bleeding under the skull's outer layer. Caput succedaneum is a swelling on the surface of the skull caused by pressure during delivery. It's visible at birth, it crosses the natural lines of the skull and goes away on its own without treatment. Subgalal hemorrhage is a severe injury which is a collection of blood between the scalp and the skull. It can be recognized by a swollen area on the head that is fluctuant. It can cross the natural lines on the skull and expand after delivery. It is associated with fast heartbeat, pale skin and excessive bleeding. It requires immediate medical attention. Regenerate response. 324. What are the differentials for skin surface sloughing off with gentle pressure, also known as Nikolsky sign? Staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome caused by toxin producing strains of Staphylococcus aureus. Hemphagus vulgaris, an autoimmune disorder that affects the skin and mucous membranes. Bullis impetigo, a bacterial infection that causes large, fluid-filled blisters. 
toxic epidermal necrolysis, a severe form of Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Additionally, what are classic X-ray findings of Ewing sarcoma? Lytic bone lesions, which appear as a holes on the bone. Onion skin appearance, which is a layering pattern seen in the affected bone on radiographic images. Ewing sarcoma is more common in children and adolescents, with a peak incidence between the ages of 10 and 15 years. 326. What are the benefits of breastfeeding to a mother? Reduced risk of breast and ovarian cancer contraindications. Active untreated TB, HIV, active drug, alcohol use. Benefits to infants. Improved immunity reduced infections, otitis media, gastroenteritis, respiratory illness, UTIs, improved GI function cut off bottom of chart reads, decreased risk of cancer, type 1 DM, and neck. 327. Main clinical feature of allergic conjunctivitis. Itching, watery discharge treatment topical antihistamines, mast cell stabilizers, ketotifen. 328. What are the two most common posterior fossa tumors in children? Astrocytoma is number one and metalloblastoma, which one is commonly located in the cerebellar vermis. Metalloblastoma truncal ataxia, vomiting, headache. 329. What seizure is easily provoked by hyperventilation? Absence. 330. What comorbidities are common in children with absence seizures? ADHD, anxiety. 331. Rapid diagnosis cardiac rhabdomyomas, renal angiomyolipomas, seizures and infancy tuberous sclerosis. 332. Transverse palmar crease is strongly associated with which chromosomal abnormality? Downs trisomy 21. 333. How to differentiate acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion? Acute otitis media, middle ear effusion plus acute eardrum inflammation bulging TM, fever, erythema, otitis media with effusion. Lack of inflammatory signs Children who recovers from acute otitis media often have persistent effusion for weeks do not require treatment. 334. What is the likely diagnosis in a child with scaly erythematous patch with hair loss on scalp with enlarged postauricular lymphadenopathy? Tinea capitis dermatophyte infection What is the treatment and preventative measures? Avoid sharing combs and hats. Oral grisofulvin, topical turbinafine the only tinea treatment that is oral. 335. Differential for anal itching in infant, pinworm enterobius vermicularis, itching worse at night. Contact dermatitis number one, topical barrier ointment treatment fails, topical barrier treatment candida, topical antifungal fails, antifungal cream perianal strep, tender, sharply demarcated erythema. 336. Polyarticular juvenile idiopathic arthritis ACA juvenile raw lab findings reflect systemic inflammation and will show elevated inflammatory markers ESR, CRP. Hyperferritinemia, hypergammaglobulinemia, anemia, anemia of chronic disease secondary to inflammation. 337. What are the symptoms of tumor lysis syndrome? N, V, diarrhea, tetany, muscle cramps after initiating cytotoxic treatment labs. Hyperphosphatemia leads to hypocalcemia, hyperkalemia. Hyperuricemia leads to urate nephropathy and ARF treatment, prophylaxis. Hydration most effective prophylaxis, rasburicase. 338. What are the calcium levels in tumor lysis syndrome? Low due to hyperphosphatemia precipitating calcium. 339. What perineoplastic symptoms are associated with neuroblastoma? VIP secretion, opsoclonus myoclonus ataxia, hypertension. 340. What are the diagnostic findings in neuroblastoma? HVA and VMA metabolites. Biopsy plus or minus and MIC gene amplification. Homer right rosette small round blue cells metalloblastoma also has Homer right rosettes. 341. Adolescents who develop significant changes in behavior should be assessed for psychosocial stressors, trauma, substance abuse, and psychiatric disorders. How should you first approach an adolescent? Young patients often do not confide in adults they do not trust so develop a trusting physician-patient relationship. 342. Congenital hypothyroidism neonate with umbilical hernia, jaundice, hypotonia, decreased activity, poor feeding, macroglossia. Infants usually appear normal due to presence of maternal hormones cretinism impaired development of brain, skeleton. 344. What are the manifestations of neurofibromatosis type I? Cafe o late spots, Lish nodules, hematomas on iris, axillary and inguinal freckling, multiple neurofibromas, peripheral nerve sheath tumors, painless nodules on, under skin scoliosis 1 divided by 3 optic glioma CN2 tumor. 345. What is the deficiency in type 1 von Jirk disease? Glucose 6-phosphatase impaired glycogen, glucose presentation. Glycogen accumulation appearance, doll-like faces, rounded cheeks, hepatongally labs, fasting hypoglycemia seizures, mild ketosis, lactic acidosis, hyperuricemia, hyperlipidemia, doll-like faces. 346. What diseases will have a low C3? VSGN, SLE, MPGN, bacterial endocarditis. 347. Orbital cellulitis is most commonly a complication of bacterial. Rhinosinusitis. Clinical features. Proptosis, ophthalmoplegia, paralysis of eye muscles, pain with eye movements, diplopia, eyelid swelling, 
erythema differential diagnoses include diplopia, ophthalmoplegia, and proptosis are typical features of orbital cellulitis and do not occur in perceptal cellulitis. Differential diagnoses include perceptal cellulitis anterior to orbital septum swelling, pain, erythema. 348. What is the diagnosis in a patient with anal itching worse at night? Enterobius vermicularis pinworm drug of choice. Albendazole or parental pamot if pregnant. Parental pamot household contacts. Treat very contagious parental pamot should only be administered in pregnancy if the pregnancy is compromised otherwise, do not start until the third trimester. 349. What are the symptoms of a clotting defect? Hemarthrosis, deep tissue hematomas platelet defect, thrombocytopenia. Vitechity, ecchymosis, easy, prolonged bleeding. 350. What should be suspected in a child who has microcytic anemia with normal RDW? Thalassemia defect of alpha or globin chains iron deficiency anemia will have increased RDW. 351. What are some features to differentiate between generalized seizures and syncope? Generalized seizures will have postictal state tongue laceration, LOC, tone syncope will return to baseline. 352. What is the treatment of androgen and sensitivity syndrome phenotypic females with 46XY? Bilateral gonadectomy after puberty decreases the risk of malignancy but allows for completion of puberty attainment of adult height. 353. Classical galactosemia galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase deficiency bilateral cataracts in infants, failure to thrive, jaundice, hypoglycemia, hepatosplenomegaly. What is this? Defect. 355. What organisms are common in burns? Treatment. MRSA vancomycin pseudomonas cephapime. Treat empirically if infection or sepsis occurs immediately after. Gram-positive organisms S. aureus greater than 5 days means gram-negative pseudomonas. 356. At what age does bedwetting and uresis become concerning? After age 5 therapies. First line. Lifestyle changes void before bedtime. Reward system. Avoid sugary, caffeinated beverages and uresis alarm desmopressin therapy ADH analog if first line therapies fail. 357. What should you tell a pubertal boy with gynecomastia? Reassurance persistence will require workup occurs in two-third of boys and is normal due to conversion of testosterone to estrogen. 358. What medications can cause gynecomastia? Spironolactone, cymetidine, ketoconazole. 359. What is the treatment of sinusitis? The treatment of sinusitis depends on the cause, whether it is caused by a virus or bacteria. The majority of sinusitis is caused by a virus and therefore, treatment is primarily supportive and focuses on relieving symptoms. This can include measures such as using humidifiers, saline nasal sprays, and over-the-counter pain relievers to reduce pain and inflammation. If the sinusitis is caused by bacteria, antibiotics may be prescribed. The choice of antibiotic will depend on the type of bacteria causing the infection and the patient's other medical conditions. The common first-line antibiotics are amoxicillin and amoxicillin clavulanate. It's a broad-spectrum antibiotics that can cover many types of bacteria. When sinusitis lasts for more than 10 days, it should be treated with antibiotics. Other indications for antibiotics are fever above 39 degrees Celsius and facial pain, particularly if the symptoms initially improve and then worsen again, which is referred to as double worsening. It's hard to distinguish viral from bacterial sinusitis. 360. When should someone get the chickenpox vaccine? The first dose should be given to children between the ages of 12 and 15 months. The second dose should be given to children between the ages of 4 and 6 years. If you are 18 years old or older and haven't had the vaccine before, you can still get it as a catch-up vaccine. People who are at high risk of getting chickenpox or are in close contact with someone who is immunocompromised, or who is about to have an organ transplant or is about to start immunosuppressive therapy, should also get the vaccine. If you have never had chickenpox and have not been vaccinated and you are healthy, you should get the vaccine. If you have never had chickenpox and have not been vaccinated and you are immunocompromised or pregnant, you should get the VZIG medicine. 361. What should you do if a one-year-old child who I know has been around someone with chickenpox and they haven't had the chickenpox before or gotten the vaccine? You should contact the child's pediatrician or healthcare provider right away. They will be able to advise you on the best course of action for your child. In general, if the child is healthy and not pregnant, they may be given a shot to prevent chickenpox as soon as possible after exposure. If the child has a weakened immune system or is pregnant, they may be given a different medication called VZIG as soon as possible after exposure. Your healthcare provider will be able to give the best advice for your child's specific situation. 362. What is the etiology of brain abscesses? Autogenic, sinus, oral, or meningeal meningitis important predisposing factors. Congenital heart disease, recurrent sinusitis. 363. What are the most common causes of viral meningitis? Non-polio enteroviruses, echo, and cox. 364. What is the most likely diagnosis in a teenager with abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, microcytic anemia, rash? Celiacs with dermatitis herpetiformis and iron deficiency anemia secondary to duodenal villus atrophy workup. 
increased tissue transglutaminase IgA antibody, IgG-demodated gliadin peptide of IgA deficiency biopsy showing villus atrophy. 365. What is the gold standard test in celiacs? Anti-tissue transglutaminase What are the indications for IgG-DGP-demonated gliadin peptide? IgA deficiency anti-endomysial is sensitive and specific but expensive so rarely done. 366. What is craniopharyngioma, Kalman's pathology? How it presents and how is it diagnosed? Craniopharyngioma is a type of brain tumor that can affect the production of hormones in the body, specifically FSH and LH which control the development of secondary sexual characteristics and menstruation. Kalman's is a disorder characterized by a lack of GnRH, leading to an absence of FSH, LH, leading to a lack of estrogen and progesterone and anosmia. Symptoms of craniopharyngioma may include primary amenorrhea and absence of secondary sexual characteristics such as breast development and pubic hair, as well as bitemporal hemianopsia. Symptoms of Kalman's may include loss of sense of smell, absence of secondary sexual characteristics, and primary amenorrhea. The diagnosis of craniopharyngioma is typically made through a cranial MRI, which will show a mass in the brain that is indicative of the tumor. CT scan might show a calcified cyst. Low FSH, LH levels alone may indicate Turner's syndrome but other diagnosis methods such as karyotype tests need to be done to confirm. 367. What are the FSH, LH levels in? Craniopharyngioma, Kalman's, Turner's. Ovaries not working so loss of feedback. 368. What is the algorithm for evaluation for primary amenorrhea? Pelvic ultrasound plus uterus FSH karyotyping Turner's FSH MRI craniopharyngioma, Kalman's. Uterus, 4620, normal female testosterone malaria agenesis 46XY, normal male testosterone androgen insensitivity syndrome. 369. What is androgen insensitivity syndrome and how does it present, how is it diagnosed and treated? Androgen insensitivity syndrome is a genetic condition in which a person with XY chromosomes does not respond to androgens properly. This results in the development of female external genitalia, despite having XY chromosomes. Symptoms of eyes may include, the presence of bilateral inguinal masses in a 16-year-old female, primary amenorrhea, normal appearing external genitalia, and development of some secondary sexual characteristics. However, the person will not have a uterus, fallopian tubes, and upper third of the vagina, similar to malarian agenesis. Due to the inability of testosterone to work properly, in eyes, the person will have female external genitalia. But in the presence of normal testosterone levels, the androgen is converted to estrogen and progesterone which promotes the development of secondary sexual characteristics. Diagnosis of eyes is made by observing a karyotype that is XY, normal male testosterone levels, and normal FSH, LH levels. Additionally, physical examination or ultrasound can reveal undescended testes and bilateral inguinal masses. Treatment for eyes typically includes surgical elevation of the vagina and removal of the gonads after puberty. It is important to note that each individual's experience of eyes can vary greatly and that these symptoms may not be the only symptoms or only presentation, and professional medical help should be sought in case of any concern. 370. What are some complications of chronic hemolytic anemia in sickle cell patients? Baseline Billy increase anemia increase reticulocyte count except a plastic crisis folate deficiency iron deficiency anemia. Rapid diagnosis, blue sclear, hearing loss, recurrent fractures, opalescent teeth, normal intelligence osteogenesis imperfecta. 372. Why are Turner's patients at increased risk of fractures? No ovaries, loss of estrogen, high osteoclast activity, bone resorption. 373. What drug class is used in the treatment of pertussis? Macrolides, azithromycin, erythromycin, clarithromycin. Erythromycin not used in lesser than one year due to risk of pyloric stenosis. 374. Presence of blood-tinged stools in young infants who are healthy and active should raise suspicion of protein-induced proctocolitis. What is this caused by? Milk or soy protein management. Continue breastfeeding and advise mother to avoid dairy and soy products. 375. What are the clinical features of varicella chickenpox? Simultaneous occurrence of various stages of rash macules, papules, vesicles causing, eruption of vesicles cause crusting. Severe pruritus The treatment includes topical ointments for pruritus such as calamine and pramixine gel and a kyclovir if immunosuppressed or unvaccinated. 376. What are the causes and timing of an eye infection in newborns? An eye infection in newborns, also called neonatal conjunctivitis, can be caused by a few different things. If the newborn was exposed to a chemical called silver nitrate within the first 24 hours of birth, that could be the cause. Another possibility is a bacteria called gonorrhea, which would cause the infection to appear two to seven days after birth. Chlamydia, another type of bacteria, can also cause the infection and it would appear five to 14 days after birth. A viral infection caused by herpes simplex virus type 1 is also a possibility. 377. What is the treatment for a neonate born 12 hours ago with bilateral, non-purulent conjunctivitis? Chemical silver nitrate conjunctivitis flush eye. 378. 
What is the differential for loss of red reflex in a neonate? Cataracts, glaucoma, retinoblastoma. 379. Rapid diagnosis trifalangeal thumb, macrocytic anemia, normal platelets and WBC counts diamond blackfin anemia Finconi anemia has pancidopenia. 380. Rapid diagnosis hyperabduction of arm causing strain on C7, C8, T1 and cervical sympathetic nerves. Claw hand, absent grasp reflex, Horner syndrome. Clumped palsy. 381. What is selective mutism? Refusal to speak in a specific social situation school versus at home or with friends where they talk failure to talk in situations where it is expected. Impairs academic and social development. Treatment, CBT, SSRI considered anxiety disorder. 382. Conjugated water soluble kernicterus. Indirect fat soluble, crosses BBB. 383. What are the differentials for conjugated hyperbilirubinemia in a neonate? Intrahepatic, Dubin Johnson, rotors, hepatitis, posthepatic biliary atresia, sepsis, metabolic, cold cyst. 384. What is the difference between physiologic and pathologic jaundice in terms of onset, resolution, bilirubin rise, and peak? Physiologic jaundice is a common and normal condition that occurs in newborns, usually within the first week of life. It is caused by an immature liver and the high levels of bilirubin that are produced during the normal breakdown of red blood cells in the baby's body. The onset of physiologic jaundice is typically within the first 24 to 48 hours after birth, and it usually resolves on its own within one to two weeks. The bilirubin level typically rises gradually, reaching a peak around three to five days after birth, after which it begins to decline. Pathologic jaundice, on the other hand, is caused by an underlying medical condition and occurs when the bilirubin level becomes abnormally high. It can be caused by problems such as liver or biliary tract disorders, blood disorders, or infections. The onset of pathologic jaundice can be more sudden and can occur at any time during the baby's life, not just in the first week. The bilirubin level typically rises rapidly and may not peak until two to three weeks after the onset of jaundice. Resolution of pathologic jaundice depends on the underlying cause and appropriate medical treatment. It's important to note that while physiologic jaundice is a normal, harmless condition, pathologic jaundice can be serious and may cause long-term health problems if left untreated. So, it is important to always seek medical attention if your baby has prolonged or severe jaundice symptoms. 385. What is the onset of physiologic hyperbilirubinemia? The onset of physiologic hyperbilirubinemia, also known as physiologic jaundice, typically occurs within the first 24 to 48 hours after birth. The rise in bilirubin levels is typically less than 5 mg divided by DL per day. The pathogenesis of physiologic hyperbilirubinemia is primarily caused by the short lifespan of erythrocytes, or red blood cells, in newborns. Newborns have a higher turnover of red blood cells compared to adults, which results in higher levels of bilirubin being produced as the cells are broken down. Additionally, the liver of a newborn is not fully mature, which can lead to decreased ability to conjugate and excrete bilirubin. Moreover, the enterohepatic circulation is increased, which means that bilirubin may recycle back to the liver instead of being excreted. Finally, less bacteria in gastrointestinal tract and lower enzyme activity in newborns contributes to this. It's important to note that physiologic jaundice is generally considered a normal and harmless condition in newborns, and it typically resolves on its own within one to two weeks. However, if bilirubin levels become extremely high or jaundice persists for a prolonged period of time, medical attention may be necessary. 386. What are the main differences between jaundice caused by breast milk and jaundice caused by breastfeeding? Jaundice caused by breast milk. This type of jaundice is caused by a problem with the quality of the breast milk, specifically a substance called B-glucuronidase. The recommended treatment is to continue breastfeeding and also supplement with a special kind of formula that has been broken down, hydrolyzed. Jaundice caused by breastfeeding. This type of jaundice is caused by a problem with the amount of breastfeeding, specifically with how much milk the baby is taking in, how their bowel is working and how bile is being removed from their body. The recommended treatment is to feed the baby more often. 387. What are the clinical features of iron toxicity usually son who swallows mom's prenatal vitamins, abdominal pain, gastroenteritis, vomiting, shock, metabolic acidosis treatment? Diferoxamine. 388. What causes Paranod syndrome? Pinyloma, a tumor that grows in the pineal gland, is one possible cause. What are the symptoms of Paranod syndrome? People with the condition may have trouble looking up, eyelids that stick out, pupils that do not react to light even though the eye's focusing mechanism is still working, and a brain condition called hydrosphalus. What type of pineloma is common in children? A type called germinoma is most common. This type of tumor may cause the body to produce too much of a hormone called BHCG, which can lead to early puberty in boys. Additionally, it can cause hydrosphalus and problems with balance. 389. 
What does a doctor look for to diagnose Kawasaki disease? A child with a fever for at least five days, along with four of the following five symptoms. Red eyes, red or cracked lips, a red and swollen tongue, a rash, and swelling and redness in the hands and feet. In addition, the child should have swollen lymph nodes in the neck that are larger than 1.5 centimeters. 390. The Kotcher criteria is a set of four signs that doctors use to determine if a joint infection, called septic arthritis, is present. These signs are high white blood cell count, difficulty bearing weight on the affected joint, high fever, high erythrocyte sedimentation rate which is a test that can indicate inflammation in the body. If a patient has all four of these signs, they likely have septic arthritis. The treatment for this condition includes draining the infected joint and taking antibiotics. Transient synovitis is a different condition that also affects joints. It is not an infection, but rather an inflammation that usually goes away on its own. The treatment for this condition usually includes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and conservative measures. It's worth noting that about 50% of patients with transient synovitis have had a recent upper respiratory infection. 391. What are the differential diagnoses for marfanoid body habitus? Marfanoid body habitus refers to a specific set of physical characteristics that can be seen in some people, including joints that are more flexible than usual, hypermobility, skin that stretches more than usual, hyperextensibility, long, thin fingers, arachnodactyly, tall stature, chest deformities, such as pectus carinatum, pigeon chest or pectus excavatum, funnel chest. There are several conditions that can have these same physical characteristics, but also have additional symptoms that help to differentiate them. Some of the differential diagnoses are Marfan syndrome. This condition is characterized by aortic root dilation, mitral valve prolapse, upward lens dislocation, and no intellectual disability. Homocystinuria. This condition is characterized by thrombosis, downward lens, intellectual disability, pale skin. MEN2B. This condition is characterized by multiple neuromas, pheochromocytoma, medullary thyroid carcinoma. Pectus deformity includes pectus carinatum or pectus excavatum. These are the common chest deformities seen in some people. It is important to have a thorough examination by a clinician or geneticist to rule out any of these conditions if someone has the physical characteristics of marfanoid body habitus. 392. Rapid diagnosis. Infant with excessive consumption of cow's milk greater than 24 ounces per day. What should you suspect? Iron deficiency anemia. 393. Which microcytic anemia has a high RDW? Iron deficiency anemia often greater than 20. 394. How long is the risk of sepsis in patients with splenectomy? Greater than 30 years important question for step 2. 395. Diagnosis of hereditary spherocytosis is made by IMCHC plus spherocytes on peripheral smear osmotic fragility test on acidified glycerol lysis test. Abnormal eosin 5 malamide binding test. 396. Exclusively under 5 treatment. Hyperpronation of the forearm. Supination of forearm with elbow in slight flexion. 397. Physicians should have high index of suspicion for physical, sexual abuse in children with sudden behavioral problems, stressful family environments, or parents with active drug, alcohol abuse. 398. What is the underlying pathogenesis of osteogenesis imperfecta? Defective type 1 collagen synthesis. Clinical features, skeletal deformities, recurrent fractures, blue sclere, hearing loss, brittle, opalescent. Teeth. Treatment. Intravenous bisphosphonates decreased bone resorption. No cure available high yield for step 2. 399. Rapid diagnosis. 4-month-old boy presents with inspiratory and expiratory biphasic stridor. Stridor improves with neck extension. Vascular ring. Neck extension decreased tracheal compression. 400. Rapid diagnosis. What disease has citus inversus, recurrent sinusitis, and bronchitis? Primary ciliary dyskinesia cartagena. 401. What is the most common cause of pulmonary infections pneumonia in young children with cystic fibrosis? S. aureus especially in the setting of concurrent influenza infection treatment. Intravenous vancomycin MRSA should be anticipated BC. They usually have lots of hospitalizations and recurrent infections. 402. What is the first step in management of a newborn with respiratory distress and congenital diaphragmatic hernia? Intubation plus ventilation. 403. What is the difference between mild and moderate croup and how is it treated? Croup is a respiratory illness that mostly affects young children and causes swelling of the voice box and windpipe. There are two main types of croup, mild and moderate. Mild croup is when a child does not make a high-pitched noise while breathing at rest. The treatment for mild croup is typically inhaling cool mist and taking a steroid medication called dexamethasone. Moderate croup is when a child does make a high-pitched noise while breathing at rest. The treatment for moderate croup is a medication called racemic epinephrine. This medication helps to constrict the blood vessels in the airway and decrease the swelling, which helps to improve the child's breathing. 
404. Rapid Diagnosis 18-month-old boy in PICU develops pleural effusion with elevated triglycerides noted on the pleural fluid values and a milky white consistency. Chylothorax lymphatic flow through the thoracic duct is disrupted causing leakage of chyle lymphatic fluid into the pleural cavity. Chyle has lipid transporting chylomicrons that contain triglycerides. 405. Rapid Diagnosis Lights Criteria Pleural Serum Protein Ratio Greater Than 0 0.5 Plural, serum LDH greater than 0.6. Plural LDH greater than two-third upper limit of normal for serum LDH. Diagnosis of exudative effusion. 406. What is the pathophysiology of transudative pleural effusion? Capillary hydrostatic pressure. CHF capillary oncotic pressure hypoalbuminemia, nephrotic exudative. Capillary permeability. 407. What is the most common cause of congenital hypothyroidism worldwide? Thyroid dysgenesis. What is the treatment of congenital hypothyroidism? Levothyric sign necessary to prevent neurodevelopmental injury. 408. Four month old with macrosomia, umbilical hernia, omphalosal, macroglossia, hemihyperplasia. Beck with Wiedemann. Screen with AFP and abdominal ultrasound for Wilms and hepatoblastoma. 410. Ray syndrome will show microvesicular stetosis on liver biopsy. What produces the opposite finding? Macrovesicular equals alcoholic hepatitis, NASH. 411. A complete block with no conduction between atria and ventricles is known as a third-degree AV block sudden onset results in a systole, which may lead to Stokes Adams attack sudden loss of consciousness. 412. What are the consequences of oligoidramnios? Pulmonary hypoplasia, flat facies, limb deformities what is the most common cause of urinary tract obstruction in newborn boys? Posterior urethral valves ultrasound shows distension, hydrators, and bilateral hydronephrosis. 413. What are the clinical features of developmental dysplasia of the hip? plus Barlow and Ortolani maneuvers equals clunk plus leg length. Discrepancy, asymmetric inguinal skin folds. Diagnosis, if lesser than 4 months then do ultrasound. If greater than 4 months then do x-ray. Treatment is with a rigid brace, pavlic harness. 414. What is the most likely diagnosis in a baby who has a head tilted to one side with the chin rotated to the opposite side? A mass is palpated on the inferior portion of the neck. Congenital torticollis treatment. Physical therapy, passive positioning. 415. What are the acquired causes of aplastic anemia pancidopenia with bone marrow insufficiency? Fanconi anemia, diamond blacken. Drugs, carbamazepine, PTU, methamazole. Toxic, benzene, radiation, parvovirus B19, EBV. 416. What is the underlying cause and presentation of Fanconi anemia? Etiology, R disorder to DNA crosslink repair defect, chromosomal breaks presentation of plastic anemia causing. Pancidopenia, macrocytic anemia skin, cafe o late spots, hypo and hyperpigmentation. Appearance, thumb, ear, forearm malformations, pancidopenia plus normal platelet and WBC counts plus macrocytic anemia plus triphalangeal thumb equals diamond blackfin. 417. Rapid diagnosis, young male with following X-ray osteoid osteoma, perifocal sclerosis around a lucent nidus. 418. What are the three major bone complications of sickle cell? Vaso-occlusive crisis, osteomyelitis s aureus, salmonella vascular necrosis confirmed with MRI. 419. Rapid diagnosis, nevus simplex looks like salmon patch. 420. Rapid diagnosis, nevus sebaceous, elevated lesion with surrounding alopecia, treatment debatable excise in adolescence versus only if persistent after puberty. 421. Rapid diagnosis, seborrheic dermatitis, thick, yellow, white scale erythematous base, clean with mild shampoo. 422. Omphalosal's midline, membranous are most commonly associated with what other disorders? Beck with Weidman big ears, tongue, hemihyperplasia, ear pits, padau, Edward. 423. What is the most likely diagnosis in a newborn male with no palpable testes? Cryptochidism remains in the inguinal canal usually next best test. Ultrasound treatment. Orchidopsy secure testicle to scrotum if not descended by six months divided by one year to avoid sterility. Cancer ideally performed before one year orchidopsy is not removal of the testes. 424. Why is gestational diabetes a risk factor for neonatal respiratory distress syndrome? Insulin prevents surfactant synthesis and lung maturation by interfering with cortisol. 425. Rapid diagnosis, newborn with hydrosphalus, intracranial calcifications, choriretinitis, toxoplasmosis, pyrimethamine, sulfate azine, and leucovorin. 426. Rapid diagnosis down, syndrome patient with back pain, ataxia, incontinence, and quadriplegia. Elantoxial instability, excessive mobility between C1 and C2 causing spinal cord compression. Excessive mobility between vertebrae C1 and C2, which may cause a subluxation of the cervical spine and spinal cord compression. Symptoms include pain, ataxia, incontinence, quadriparsis, and quadriplegia. Atlantoxial instability requires swift stabilization of the spine. 
427. Rapid diagnosis, omphalosal, rocker bottom feet, hammer toe, microcephaly, clenched hand, Edwards trisomy 18. 428. Rapid diagnosis, child presence with an intellectual disability, happy demeanor with laughing, and fascination with water. Disease and cause, Angelman, maternal chromosome, 15 deletion. 429. Rapid diagnosis, Elfin facies, hypersociability, increased empathy, hypercalcemia Williams syndrome deletion of chromosome 7. Also associated with supervalvular aortic stenosis murmur at first right intercostal space. 430. What is the management of caustic agents cleaning products? Secure airway, remove contaminated clothes, endoscopy in first 12 to 24 hours. What should you not do? Induce vomiting, avoid damage to esophagus, neutralize with weak acid. Patient can present with normal cognition, nausea or vomiting, heavy salivation. 431. What is the most common cause of growth delay? Constitutional growth delays temporary delay in growth and onset of puberty that is not caused by pathological process what will x-ray show? Bone age is greater than real age. What is the treatment? None child will reach a normal adult height. 432. What ECG finding is part of the minor criteria for acute rheumatic fever? Prolongation of PR. 433. Rapid diagnosis. 18-month female with asymmetric gluteal folds on exam hip dysplasia. Risk factors include firstborn female plus family history, breech position. 434. Neonate with superiosteal hematoma that is limited to the cranial suture lines. Cephalohematoma. 436. An 11-year-old boy presents with a history of seizures and he recently started carbamazepine. In addition, he just returned from summer camp where there was a measles outbreak. He recently developed a rash. What are the two etiologies that should be suspected? Carbamazepine. Adverse effects include dress, agranulocytosis for measles look for other characteristic features prodrome of 4 degrees Celsius. 437. What is the management of acute exacerbation of multiple sclerosis? Methylprednisolone, second line, plasmapheresis refractory to steroids. 438. Veroblastoma is a childhood malignancy that is associated with amplification and overexpression of n mic oncogene. 439. Viral prodrome that does not improve with racemic epinephrine. Endoscopy with tracheal culture probably trachetes caused by S. aureus. 440. What is the most appropriate treatment in a patient with acute otitis media? Patient has a history of urticaria following treatment for pharyngitis. Macrolides azithromycin macrolides are treatment of choice for acute otitis media in patients with previous immediate allergic reaction to penicillin antibiotic. If delayed reaction, then use cephalosporin. 441. What are the two pulmonary complications of systemic sclerosis? Pulmonary arterial hypertension. Interstitial lung disease eventually would lead right ventricular enlargement producing a RV heave on physical exam also at increased risk of lung cancer. Five times greater than the general population. 442. What is the FEV1 and FEV to FVC ratio in pulmonary arterial hypertension for example, systemic sclerosis? Normal differentiated from pulmonary hypertension due to lung disease or left-sided heart failure with normal FEV1 and FEV1 to FVC ratio because the lung parenchyma is generally unaffected. 443. What are the symptoms of tinea versicolor pityriasis versicolor? Hypo or hyperpigmentation on the trunk or chest, lesions that do not tan in the sunlight what is the treatment? Selenium sulfide, azoles. 444. What organism is most likely in a patient that presents with fever and croup-like symptoms that do not resolve with racemic epinephrine? Staph aureus trichates workup required. Endoscopy laryngoscopy or bronchoscopy with tracheal culture. Trichates path, staph aureus most common following viral prodrome presentation. About 4 years, follows viral prodrome. Croup that does not resolve. Toxic sickness. Diagnosis. Endoscopy laryngoscopy or bronchoscopy with tracheal culture. Imaging. Steeple sign just like croup so not sensitive specific. No improvement with racemic epinephrine for example, is it not croup? Treatment. Maintenance of airway intravenous antibiotics. 445. What is the most important first step in management in a patient who presents with ascending paralysis and a recent history of diarrhea and vomiting? Spirometry to assess pulmonary function respiratory failure most life-threatening complication of guillain bar guillain bar Etiology, path, urea or GI infection 1 to 4 weeks prior to onset. Campylobacter most common overall and CMV most common virus antibodies against myelin causing, demyelination and axonal degeneration symptoms. Symmetric paresthesias, ascending paralysis Landry paralysis involvement of respiratory muscles causing, labored breathing, hyporeflexia. Spirometry measures FVC, assess pulmonary function because respiratory failure is the most life-threatening complication for 30% of patients. Decline in FVC lesser than 20 indicates impending respiratory arrest. 
446. What is the most likely diagnosis in a young patient with recurrent epistaxis, recurrent infections, and anemia? Physical shows a short satire, hyperpigmented areas on the back, and esotropia. CBC shows pancidopenia with a low HB. Fanconi anemia pancidopenia, short stature, cafe o late spots, and strabismus. Fanconi due to defective DNA crosslink repair other common findings is abnormal thumbs. 447. What is the next best step in a child who presents with a fever and ear discharge? Autoscopy shows a bulging tympanic membrane with pus. Physical shows postauricular tenderness. CT scan. Antibiotics are always indicated in mastoiditis. Regimen always involves vancomycin but really depends on the course of the infection. 448. Kleinfelder syndrome is a 47XXY disorder associated with small testes, testosterone deficiency, tall growth pattern with long extremities, and gynecomastia. 450. What is the most likely diagnosis in a four-month-old boy who presents with seizures? He was born at home. Physical exam shows light hair and blue eyes. His urine is noticeable for a musty odor. Phenylketonuria PKU. 452. What is the most likely diagnosis that presents with swelling of the head at birth that crosses the suture lines? Caput succedaneum present at birth and crosses the suture lines. 453. What is the platelet count in Henox gone line purpura? Normal important differentiating factor from other causes of purpura. 454. What are the most common complications of a supracondylar fracture of the humerus? Neurovascular injury to the median nerve and brachial artery. 459. Indications for a contrast voiding cystourethrogram in a child with a urinary tract infection is 1. Children with greater than 2 episodes of febrile UTIs 2. A child with a first febrile UTI in any of the following A. Renal anomaly detected on ultrasound B. Fever greater than 102.2 and a pathogen other than E. coli Used to diagnose vesicurateral reflux typically done for newborns age lesser than 1 month with their first UTI Children lesser than 2 years with recurrent UTIs Or a first UTI from an organism other than E. coli 461. What is the next best step in a patient with chickenpox who is immunocompromised? A chiclevir immunocompromised or unvaccinated and greater than 13. 462. What is the empiric treatment of neonatal sepsis? Ampicillin, gentamicin, in addition to supportive care. 